<laughs> What's the motherfucking deal? Welcome to the den. I hope all is well this evening. I hope uh, that you guys are having a wonderful time. Um, <laughs> again, this is the best conversation on the internet. And uh, welcome. I hope that all is going well for you. I hope this is a pleasant evening. I'm your host, Ed Honcho, as you saw in the little graphic. You can follow my personal social medias on Instagram and Twitter. If you want to follow The Den Show, you can go to Den Show Live at Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and also um, Den Show Live at gmail.com. As you'll see throughout the stream, these little pop-ups will pop up randomly, and you can use any of these things to... Uh, Contact the den if necessary. Shout out to Coltry. Making my life easier. Thank you so very much. Because I forget to push the fucking shit all the time. And I do it like three times a stream. And a two or three hour stream. And you know sometimes people don't get the notification. Don't have the the accessibility. So shout out to Coltry. And I appreciate that. Again it was a much needed. And uh, very very well put together. And clearly, clearly understandable. Um script that you sent there. So thank you. Shout out to Cultured if you like the little things going across the screen. Um, <clears throat> tonight we're going to talk about political agendas, right? Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you enjoy the conversation. If you've just been lurking here for a few months. If you like, if you were like Rabbit said last night, you know, I checked it out, but I ain't subscribed at first. Then make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you want to support the channel, you can go to streamlabs.com slash the den show. If you want to go to Patreon, shout out to the Patreon. Uh, <clears throat> Patrons, I guess. Shout out to Stina Starry, Diana, Betty. Shout out to um, James, Dan the Man, and Miss Goya. I appreciate all the love. I mean, y'all don't like the you don't like Trump with the grill in the back? They just threw some diamonds in that shit. That shit have been real play. But we're gonna talk about political agendas, and I thought that would be humorous to throw in the background, just because. Um, so this morning we talked about agendas, and it went way left. No, no pun intended. We're going to talk about some things, and <clears throat> we're going to get to some discussion. Let's see what we got joining us this evening. And again, I want to say it's an honor, a pleasure, and a privilege to get to chop it up with you guys each and every night. And I thank you for being here. You can be anywhere in the world this evening, but you're in the den with friends, so I'm glad that you can make it. I see culture. My name, what's the motherfucking deal? Corey Key, Shelly Long, Savage Donald Trump, Kenesha S. What's the motherfucking deal? Ball as well. I know y'all said it was a, a situation in Dallas. Um... Terrence G, VC Online, what's the motherfucking deal? Heidi. Hello, Heidi. When Kenneth ain't here, I gotta take it out on Heidi. <laughs> Kyle MC, what's the motherfucking deal? Uh, Sweetberry, what's the motherfucking deal? Beyond a funny nigga, what's the motherfucking deal? Let me see, let me see, let me see. Uh, Baker Man, what's the motherfucking deal? Smith, what's the motherfucking deal? Uh, Mr. Nice Guy, always good to see you. Let's see, Terrence G, what's the motherfucking deal? D Love, what's the motherfucking deal? Um, so, Della Jones, what's the motherfucking deal? Let's talk about it. Let's, let's get into it, man. Uh, political agendas. When it comes to politics, everybody has an agenda. Let's, we can't deny that, right? Can't deny that at all, right? Um, but some agendas are more blatant than others. I did a video earlier. Some of y'all weren't too keen on it. That's fine. It's not about the, the political leanings that you have. It's about the way that they send the message. It's almost like they dumb it down for certain people. And that's what I don't like. You know what I'm saying? That's what I don't like. Boy, bye. That bothered me. That bothered me a whole lot. Maybe I'm going to from the wrong hand. There we go. There we go. At the Denso shop, get you one of these snazzy mugs. I'm going to start a, a mug club like, like Crowder. <laughs> I only got one mug, though. So I got to up my game up. Uh, let me get a We All Gonna Die mug. I think that'll be that'll be pretty cool. I'll, I'll take different sayings and phrases that we uh, have throughout the day. And, uh, and we will do that. But... I know I said I was going to quit, but I fucking lied. Oh, well. 
right here, 239. I'm back in the 230s now. I'm 239 on the dot. I'm celebrating. It's a celebration. Um, boy, bye. Who is that catering to? Who is that targeting? And is that something that really gets your vote? That's something you say to if you're a lady, and it's not something a dude says. Um, something you say to a lady from an unwanted advance from a man. And maybe, maybe he's trying to grab him by the pussy. And maybe that's what you would say, boy, bye. Maybe is that, is that what, is that the, is that the contradiction to that? I don't know. Is that the counter argument to it? I'm not sure. But to me, it just seems like a played out phrase that has no place in the political arena. You know? Um, it just doesn't seem adequate, you know? It seems like we're playing down to you. It seems like we're just, we'll tell you anything just to get your vote. That's what it, that's what it feels like to me. It almost seems insulting. It really does seem insulting. You go from, I'm gonna give you a bunch of hope and change. I'm gonna give you the Obama phone. I'm gonna play basketball on the White House. We're gonna barbecue. You know, I'm gonna get a dog. I don't know, did Obama have a dog? I don't know if he had a dog or a cat. He seems like a cat person. Um, we went from hope and change to boy bye. I don't know. Seems like another episode of another uh, another episode of pandering by the the Dems. You know, it's just insulting to me. It's almost like, hey, we already got your vote. We ain't gonna tell you anything worthwhile. It doesn't even matter. You know, it doesn't matter. We're just gonna, hey, you know, we're just gonna say some shit that you would say. And that's what frustrates me. That's what bothers me about that. It's almost like it's gotten so blatant, the blatant pandering, right? You know, um, wow, Joe Biden says going to cure cancer. I think I saw something about that. Now, <clears throat> and it's not just to that I feel like they're pandering to blacks. Shout out to Miss Miss Reed. She sent me something. It was something I kind of briefly saw earlier, but I didn't pay any attention to it. Now they're talking about gay reparations. Who is the side of the aisle that is most catering to the gays? Why would they say something like that? How do you get gay reparations? Do I just say, hey, hey, I need my reparations? I don't know. I don't know how that works. You know, they use the reparation tactic, uh, technique for the black folks. And I'm going to be honest with you. Hey, if they send out them checks, it's going to look just like uh, Chappelle said. And I'm going to be the nigga in the cool truck slanging them hoes. But the thing about it is, I forgot, it's like something trillion dollars that they would have to pay if they were legitimately going to do it. We still got a national debt that we ain't fucking with. Man, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not counting on it. But hey, if it come around, I'm going to be first in motherfucking line. I'll, I'll see it. Be that, that high school speed going to come back. But it's not something I think highly is going to be highly likely. But now, hey, we'll pay you for being gay. Gay for pay. Is that what it is now? Is that what they're doing? You know what I'm saying? Why is it that? Why is this? Don't the gays have all the money already? Isn't that, isn't that what's already going like, on? Oh, 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 like the gays all rich anyway. What, is, what was it called? Dinks? Double income, no kids? Why do they need reparations? Why do they need reparations? What, what, what are gay reparations? Again, what is this agenda? Who's pushing this agenda? And I'm not saying that the Republicans don't have their own agenda. But some of it is just so blatant. Some of it is just so blatant to me by the left. And that's what concerns me. Why aren't you giving me policy? Why aren't you telling me how you're going to fix my life? 
why aren't you telling me how we're going to improve things? She's going to tell me, hey, we're going to use a bunch more pronouns and we're going to pay the gay people. That's what you, that's what they, that's what they, that's what they want to do. Right. Even though they, they run all the media and everything else. Again, y'all understand why I say the things that I say. I'm not a, not a hardcore conservative. I'm not. I have conservative leaning views, a lot of them. But I like to think that I'm independent. I like to think that, you know, I won't say that I'm straight down the aisle. You know, if it was like, if, if politics were, <laughs> this is a horrible analogy. If uh, politics were a country road, and you got one farm on one side, one farm on the other, and you got a little dirt road in the middle, I'm gonna be honest, I'll probably be walking close to the right side of the road. Well, you know, you can pass me on the left if you choose to. But it's just like, man, to me, me personally, it's insulting. Taking all the emotions out of it, taking all of the other stuff out of it, it's insulting. It's like you, you, you're, you're insulting my intelligence, you know, but again, some people, that makes them relatable. Some people find it, um, some people find it intriguing. Yeah, and I've been, I've been looking on the, uh, the, the libertarian thing. I don't, I don't, I don't know. It's something about it that I forgot what it was because I was looking up the, the exact definition. There was something about it that I don't know, but I might, I might probably be in that area somewhere. Because I actually believe that everybody should be able to do what the fuck they want to do. I believe in minimal government, right? They're <laughs> going to other directions, the left to the passerby. Well, they, they're not going the right way, goddammit. They're going backwards. Thank you, Sweetberry. I appreciate it. I'm trying to, trying to catch up to the sauce. No. But um, I just feel like it's demeaning. I feel like it's underhanded in a way. But it's so blatant. Who cares, right? Who cares? Then they're saying, hey, we want to give 16-year-olds the right to vote. Why would they want to do that? Why would you want to give a 16-year-old who can barely drive the right to vote? 16-year-olds don't know shit, right? What can a 16-year-old tell you about what's going on in this country other than what they've heard from their celebrity idols who've told them to go in this particular direction? Again, if you gave 16-year-olds the right to vote, you would have a significant number of new voters who were leaning in one way, particularly. Danny B. Moore, what's the motherfucking deal? Glad you could join us this evening. Rashida Reed, what's the motherfucking deal? Shelly Long. I ain't, I ain't gonna say it, Shelly. I'm gonna let you make it tonight. I'm, I'm, gonna, stay, I'm gonna stay above the board tonight, Shelly. But you know what I wanna say. And so, all I'm saying is this. There is an agenda. And again, do the Republicans have an agenda? Yeah, I think they do. But it's much more deceptive, maybe. Everybody wants to stay in power. There's nothing wrong with that, I guess. But what you've seen really interesting as of late is the Republicans have been more into the criminal justice reform. You know? A.B., what's the motherfucking deal? That, that's, that's been pretty interesting to me because generally Republicans are you know, kind of hard line on, on you know, heavy handed, um, what's the word I'm looking for? This is more heavy handed when it comes to crime. But you see now that this is the party that is, you know, enacted the criminal justice reform. And I want to talk about that Phoenix situation too, because I, uh, I told y'all how I felt about it, but some new details have came out. And it doesn't change the way I feel about how they were apprehended. But 
there's some questionable motives there. Now, everybody's big corporation, yes. <laughs> They're everybody's big corporation, in my opinion. But, exactly. What's, what? I don't get that. I don't get the voter ID thing. That's something I've, I've never understood. I've had an ID since I was 16. Had my permit at 15, you know. Um, I don't understand what the big issue is, is about getting, uh, the big issue about getting um, identification. That's something I've never really understood. I've never really understood that. You know, I think the Democrats kind of fucked themselves. Let me be honest, when I really just lost all touch with them. When they undermine their own party, when they, when they undermine their own party, with the Bernie Sanders um, deal. You know what I'm saying? Bernie Sanders was the front runner for their party, but like you said, you know, big corporation, big Hillary. They went and made sure they played into her hands. And well, she took a devastating loss because she felt entitled to the presidency. You know, it's all very questionable. All very questionable. But nowadays it's very interesting because we talk about big government. And for most things, I'm, I'm not about government involvement. But what you have now is, I think with all the way social media has been incorporated into our lives, I think this is a point where government may have to get involved. Because, I mean, these big companies where you're getting most of your news, where you're getting most of your information and things like that are blatantly, blatantly blocking information, you know. So, I'm not opposed to it. You see a lot of these college campuses... rallying against free speech. I mean, I have no problem with free speech, whether it's for me or against me. If I ever go on a, uh, if I ever go on a speaking tour, you know, and uh, the youth <laughs> want to rally against me, I would look forward to that. I think that would be funny. Um, but yeah, all of this stuff, net neutrality, that's a terrible thing. But like I said, it's so much shit that's going on I have a question, and I want y'all to call in. I want you to share your thoughts, whether you, you, you're left, right, independent, libertarian, Green Party, whether you don't give a fuck about any of it. The main question I want to get out of tonight is, are politics more so about the party than the people at this point? Has the game changed? Because it used to be the people who were in control. Now it seems like you have a lot of career politicians who will do anything to stay in power and to have a job that I would think is pretty cushy, honestly. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, there's that. Mailroom clerk, what's the motherfucking deal, man? Oh, the uh, the kid, Kyle. Um... It's a very interesting situation. Before I speak on that, I need to look a little bit more into it. I know the fringe information about it. But I have thoughts, but I, I don't I don't they're not very well informed. So before I speak on that, I want to I do want to look at a little bit more into it. Um, but welcome. Glad you could join us for the live. Marie Lovely, what's the motherfucking deal? Um, <laughs> Everybody talks about the man, but Hillary was the man, and everything that is represented. You've been hoodwinked and bamboozled. I feel, I feel the same way. Minister Reda Rejoice, what's the motherfucking deal? Glad you could join us. Um, so I'm open up the line. I'm not going to take a lot more time. I'm not going to waste your your time. You know, because the den is about the people. The den is not about the party. Because there are no parties. 
there's no parties here. <clears throat> it's about everybody being able to speak their mind, whether we agree, whether we disagree. It's about understanding how the other side feels. That's what matters the most. And I want to know what you think. It's not about my thoughts. I'm going to say what I want to say. Y'all going to disagree with me sometimes. Sometimes y'all going to agree with me. But you know what the one thing is? It's all love. At least I love y'all. I love y'all. Y'all might not like me too much. Y'all be waiting on my downfall. <laughs> no, I'm fucking with you. Uh, let's get this line open, man. And um, let's talk about some shit. Let's, let's, let's get some good conversation going on here. Um, you throw parties at them. Man, I remember back in high school, niggas used to throw parties. They were great parties. Great parties. That's what the world needs more of. The world needs more love. We, ain't got, we don't have enough love on this on this small planet of ours. Yeah, I, I follow him. I, I haven't heard. I haven't really looked at too much of what he said. I know he addressed that Chris Jenner thing, but I I did give OJ a follow, and I can't wait to see the shit show. Something bad's gonna happen. <laughs> he's, he's just gonna fuck around and tweet. <laughs> if I if I would have done it, this is how I would have done it: a series of tweets. <laughs> Oh, it's going to be great. I can't wait. It, it, it's eating inside him. It's only going to be so long before he says some shit. Professor Trio, what's the motherfucker? Oh, they're, they're not going to notify. Look, it's going to be less notifications than ever because I made a video. And the reason why I did that video specifically about the Democrats, like, I got to let y'all know certain things I do. Most of the stuff I do is somewhat calculated. It, it's to study. It's to test. It's to figure things out. And I know that that video would not get pushed like certain other videos. I know for a fact that, you know, YouTube is blatantly suppressing certain information, you know. Again. You say old people voted for laws that don't affect them, bothers you, but you don't feel alone in this thinking. Okay. Well, what about people who are, who are you know, what are your thoughts on, on somebody being 16 being able to vote since, you know, they're voting for their future? Because that's what somebody could say. I'd like to know your thoughts on that. Um, we have such a we have such a such a loving group here. This chat is so toxic. I love it. I love it. <laughs> but y'all are so giving with the pistachios. I love that shit. Um, and that's fucked up because you didn't get a notification. I put this thing out. I, I put the uh, the stuff up way earlier than usual. Way earlier than usual. Well, y'all know me. I be late sometimes. I put it up about 10, 15 minutes before the stream starts. I put it up at least an hour and a half early. No, I'm lying. It was an hour and 28 minutes early. You know what I'm saying? So that's the crazy thing. But, you know, the way YouTube works is, you know, however your last video does, if it does better, then they, you know, they, they, they push your next thing out a little bit more if it doesn't do as well. Um, they don't push it out to as many people, your notifications. And again, by me deliberately putting that video up the way that I did, um, it was, like I said, today was kind of a test to see what happens. Because like I say, it's, it's, it's depending on how I present certain content in the future. And I'm going to be looking at... Um, I'm be looking at alternative sources and things because I think that as I'm working on the, uh, the Den Show website, which I'll probably try to have it up by the end of the week, hopefully... Um, I'm probably going to be using a different, um, a different video site to, to embed videos and things like that. So there may be more videos on there that may not end up on YouTube. So that'll, you know, be an incentive to check out the site when it's up. Uh, and I'll probably end up posting some of those things on the Patreon too. So, cause I've been looking for some, cause I told you there's some conversations I want to have Excuse me. There's some conversations I want to have that I don't feel are safe for YouTube. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. know. So we'll see how that works. We'll see how it goes. Can OJ rehab his image like Mike Tyson? Absolutely not. OJ can't fight. Oh, uh, and he walks funny. So here's the deal. The line is open. I want to know how y'all feel. I want to know what, what, what bothers you the most about particular political parties. Say that three times fast. 
You know, if you lean left, what bothers you about the other side? I have, I have, a, I have a great question. I have a great question. Tyson killed many brain cells. <laughs> Tyson knocked out half of people's brains. Uh, but I, I got a great question for you. I want you to challenge yourself, okay? I want you to challenge yourself. We'll take this call. And I'm going to tell you what I want you to do by, to challenge yourself. What's the motherfucking deal? Who do we have calling into the den this evening? Oh, hold on. Fix the mic. All right, can you hear me now? Hey, how are you? I'm doing excellent. Who do we have calling into the den this evening? This is Danny D. Moore. Danny, how are you doing tonight? And it's good to hear from you. I am just fine. <laughs> So I've what, been kind of busy um, the last week or so, but I've been trying to catch up on the on the last two conversations. Okay. So what's on your mind on tonight's topic? Well, here's my thing with a 16-year-old. First of all, you can't, you know, and I, and I just put this in there. You can't have it both ways. You can't say that a 16-year-old is too young. You got all these competing interests. Mm -hmm. And that's the and and that's the problem. You have all these competing interests mm -hmm. in the Democratic Party that I think they're trying to push one agenda. You know, the more people they can get to vote, the more people who don't understand what's going on, they can get they can manipulate to vote in their favor. Mm -hmm. And 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 that's kind of you know that's a bad thing. I'm I'm a I think I'm an independent. I think I like to vote for whoever is the best candidate. They don't have to be black. They don't have to be white or Democrat or Republican. They just have to have the best ideas that are going to help my family, you know, go further with our own agenda and living a healthy and happy life. Okay. okay. That makes sense. But as far as a 16-year-old, first of all, you can't say that a 16-year-old does not does not have the understanding of the gravity of the situation when they commit a crime, such as robbery, carjacking, murder, the gang initiate. They didn't know what they were getting into. They didn't know what they were doing. They were being influenced by all of these different things. And then say, in the same breath, that they have the understanding of law and policy to actually use those, use that now to affect political change or, you know, policy or laws in whatever state they're in and affect those changes in their state in their favor one way or the other because they're, like you said before, their favorite celebrity told them to. You got all these people that sit up there and they don't understand that when when you go into all these politicians, they're Republicans or Democrats, they all have an agenda. We all know that they all have an agenda. Like you said, they all want to stay in power. They all want to be in some, you know, position to to further their own. They're already millionaires mm -hmm. from the get go. So nothing we do is affecting them. And everything, everything they do is affecting us. And you look at all these cities where there is black leadership, Baltimore, Chicago, Memphis, all these places, Atlanta, where there is black leadership. And you see what the crime looks like. But you have all of these narratives about everybody being held down. You got in this city right here in Baltimore, you have black running every every position in every government. It, I mean, it, that's not a stage that there's not black leadership in Baltimore. But people would still say it's racist, it's racist, it's racist. You can only keep playing that card for so long. You keep us as black, we, we keep voting in the same leadership. If we got one guy here um, coming. He's been in office, what, 30, 40 years? Yeah. But when our rise and all that stuff happened, he went up on Pensy and North, 
and in the earth with a rod and stuff like that. It's like the first time he ever seen the damn earth. Hmm. Him and a lot of other politicians. But you've been in office for 30, 40 years in the same position, and you've not affected change at all except for your own pocket. Because hmm. you're not wanting for anything. All your benefits are taken care of. Your retirement is done. All the employees who work under you are trying to, are, are fighting, are fighting retirement recession where they're taking your 20 years, turning it into 25, where they trying to cut back on people's pension. And you want a 16-year-old to start voting on these things? Things that really affect people's lives? This ain't a rap video. It ain't nothing that you can solve in a rap video. These are things that actually have to happen in adult life, health care. How you pay for it? And I say these guys, they got all these goals in their mouth. Well, what happened when something is wrong with the goal? Or it's rotting right your teeth? And you ain't got no health care plan. And hmm. you want 16 year olds voting on things like health care, medical, laws, real laws that affect real life. I say no. Hmm. Okay. Ms. Danny B. Moore, I had a question for you. <clears throat> I know, like you said, you had been busy. Mm -hmm. I'd like to know your thoughts on the situation that just took place. You mentioned Memphis. And I'd like to know your thoughts on what, what took place out there and in that whole situation. <laughs> well, here, here, here are my thoughts on this. My thoughts is, you know, <laughs> it's like I'm going to say this. You go looking for something, and 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 you're gonna and you're gonna find it. You play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. Mm -hmm. That and 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 that's what it is. Everybody is looking at this situation as, oh my God, another another black man getting killed. Mm -hmm. I, I say like in cities like you want to make. There are so many black. This is a black city, so of course, uh, most of the crimes are going to be committed by black people, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. We have all these deaths in Memphis, and, and I think Memphis is ahead of Baltimore on the crime chart. Mm -hmm. I think it's number two, and we might be three or four and everything. So it's not like black men are losing their lives every day in Memphis, every day. And so when Pookie killed Ray Ray, you didn't protest then. And you didn't have a problem with Pookie killing Ray Ray. For whatever reason that Pookie did it, he just did it. And you said nothing. Nobody said nothing. Leaders said nothing. Politicians said nothing. Nobody said nothing. They keep, keep chalking it up to another black life law at the hands of another black person. And when I walk down the street, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid walking by the police. I'm afraid. Walking by another, I'm, I'm afraid of walking by a crowd of black men, hmm. and, and and nobody wants to wants to say the truth. Nobody wants to face it. Well, if you walk, if you could be, if you walk with your girlfriend right now, and you out somewhere, and it's a crowd of young black men, and y'all in a dark alley or dark place, and you tell me that you're not afraid, what's going to happen? You. They sitting up there with a gang sign, gang gear on, and not that every black person is doing that. And that, and, and I want to make it absolutely clear: not every black person is committing a crime, or every black man, or or different things. But there are a lot that are. And in the city where I'm from, and everything, those are the things I have to worry about. I say you might have. If you look at all the shootings for the year in any city, you might have, okay, 10, maybe 8 to 10 police-involved shootings, but you have 300 black-on-black -black shootings, black-on-black -black homicides, and then you have another 500 black-on-black -black non-fatal shootings. 
where they attempted to kill somebody, they just got their aim wrong. Hmm. But nobody sees a problem with that. And nobody looks at that. What happened down there in Memphis, nobody is speaking for the system. And nobody even cares about there's somebody in the hospital that's fighting for their life. All everybody heard was, maybe this guy's going to be okay. He, he lived. Well, okay, he lived, but what's the quality of life going to be like? Hmm. What kind of injuries is he is he dealing with? How long is he going to have to stay in the hospital? He's fine today, but if the first thing set in the mar, is is he still going to be okay? Is he going to be on medic on you know what kind of medicine is he going to have to take over his life period? And I know from doing my job that people get shot today and die five years later because their injuries progress. They have wheelchairs. They have bags, you know, colostomy bags and other things. And that stuff does, ne- that stuff does not get better. It only gets worse. So we talk about, oh, they're alive. But they're alive today. But when they die, the injuries are going to be contributed their, homic- their death is going to be contributed to the injuries they sustain doing whatever assault that happened to them. And it's going to be ruled a homicide. That's just what it is. But nobody is looking at this young man like he was a threat to the community. He wasn't kidding. All them stats of a, a, a dial bills and stuff that he had, that's his rap culture. You know, it's a rap culture. And, and everybody thinks it's okay. It's okay to talk about guns. It's okay to talk about, you know, whether you rap in your real life. It, it, and matter of fact, it's not even like people, it's, you know, people get upset if they find out you're not rapping about your real life. Hmm. About thugging and killing and robbing and doing all the stuff to me. Oh, man, you wasn't even doing that for real. Like when 21 Savage got in trouble, everybody, oh my God, he was Canada, he ain't doing none of that stuff. Well, he's from Australia, wherever the heck he was from. <laughs> but he ain't even really doing all that stuff. And the people was mad because he's not even rapping his real life about hurting other people. Hmm. And and that's something we don't we don't look at. But this kid, he went, and we all hear about, and, and people got to look at it, if that's your loved one, you simply trying to make a buck. You got something in your house that you're trying to get rid of. It could be a crystal, a, a ball, a car, uh, a, you know, a, you know, something you think is antique. And you put it on eBay, you put it on any one of these sites, and you, you know, and you think that people are coming to meet you for legitimate reasons, and when you get there, they are fault you and shoot you or your loved one and and no one is expressing anything any concern i've not heard any concern for this victim who who went through this is he okay set up a go fund me for him hmm. but that's such a go fund me for the suspect but they're not setting up a go fund me for the victim who gonna have Medical bills out the ass, fifty thousand plus medical bills. Maybe his job is going to cover him. Maybe it's not. Probably not. And he's going to be in debt with his taxes, and they're going to be taking his taxes, everything, trying to get some medical bills back. But nobody is talking about taking care of the victim of this suspect who they're riding over. People look at these riots as an opportunity for mayhem. They don't, some of them don't even know what the hell it's like. If you ask them today, name the last five victims in your community that got shot. They can't tell you none of them. They can tell you anything related to the police. But they can't tell you the people they grew up with that's dead and gone, that got killed a block from them. They can't name none of them. They can tell you about Freddie Gray, Tamar Wright, and whatever happened in New York. They can tell you about all of this stuff, but they can't tell you name the last five people where they live at, the last five black men where they live at that have been killed by another black man. They can't tell you nothing.
nothing about them. This kid was sitting there in the victim's car. In the victim's own car that he carjacked and stole when U.S. Marshals came to him. He tried to ram these police. He just wasn't trying to go to jail. And nobody seen it. And everybody up and on. Because I don't understand. How do you expect? Wait, wait a minute, sir. Can you please pull over nicely? Can I please? Can you please pull over? Can you please stop? Can you please not shoot me? Can you? I really want to go home today. Can we please make this nice and me? It don't work out like this. Arresting somebody who's not willing to go is never going to look pretty under any, whether it's the physical part or shooting. It's not going to look pretty. And everybody want to sit there like, oh my God, they didn't have to do this. They could have shot him right here. They could have shot right there. No. They did what they had to do. This guy made the choice. He could have just stopped. And all of these shootings have most of the same things in common. Regardless of what the person is wanted for or being arrested for, they could simply stop and be arrested. If the officers are wrong, send their ass to jail, throw them under the under the under the bus, throw them in the key, whatever, if they're wrong. But all you have to do is stop. You got all these people, Colin Kaepernick, all these people who telling people, keep challenging these officers at all costs, no matter what happens. Keep challenging them, thought authority, but they not doing it themselves. Because Colin Kaepernick ain't having, ain't having no contact with no police. No negative contact whatsoever. But he's sending these young kids out here on his behalf to fight with the police. Don't go to jail regardless of what you've been arrested for. Fight them. But not explaining to them. No, you fight in court. You fight in the legal process. You don't fight on the street. Because you will end up losing your life. And I have three young black men that I'm raising. But I don't see them being in those situations because they've been raised a little differently than that. And if that ever happened, I would be totally surprised. But everybody sit up there with the, and they, then they sit up there and show the high school graduation pictures. Well, he's been out of high school. He's been out of high school years ago. Two years, three years, that's a long time. Show him today. Show him today what he's doing. Don't keep saying he was just on a grad and all this kind of stuff. Could have, should have, would have. His life in the past ain't who he turned out to be. He was violent. He was thugging. He was sleeping around. He got four kids, probably the only four that, you know, that got him settled down. He probably didn't even claim all in. And everybody want to sit there and act like this is some sugar, you know, it's like some little teddy bear that just randomly got killed by the police in a car stop. When that's not what happened. But reality is, people don't care about the fact when they're pushing a political agenda. They don't care about the truth. They don't care about who they're hurting furthering their agenda because nothing that's happening in our community is affecting them. They're sitting up there, the same people talking about they hate the police and, and they pushing everybody to fight the police. They surrounded by the police. Hmm. They protected by the police. Police sitting at their house, police walking around with them everywhere they go, but they telling you not to trust the police when they life is in the police hands and they are fine with it. Hmm. And people don't see that part of it. Hmm. Okay, I've been rambling. 
No, but it's, no, you good. I mean, hey, if you if you got it in, you preach. Uh, but some very valid points. Yeah, a lot of people who say these things are also often protected by the police, and that's something a lot of people don't really think about. So that's actually a very interesting point there. Um, so looking forward here into this this next election, uh, you said that you're independent. Do you do you see Trump winning again in 2020? understand these all the things here's one thing you can deal with a person a person that's being deceptive about who they are everybody like well he is this and he's that and oh okay he is who he is he know he didn't try to hide who he is when he says something and he tell you he's gonna do something he actually does it hmm. now you might not like his method or how he do it but he's not in this to be friends with everybody. He in this to create jobs. He in this to create uh, a different to bring America back to the forefront. You know, being the foreign power that it is, and the leadership role within the global on the global stage. And we have fell off a little bit and everything. And I think he has to. Successfully, you know, the man is the master of negotiation. And whether you love him or hate him, the man is the master of negotiation. And he gets these deals done. And it's not about whether you black or white in these deals. You know, it's, it's about what's best for the country. So, yeah, I, I see. I, I don't see, you know, like everybody wants to keep ignoring the creepy stuff with Biden and all this sexual stuff. All of me, see, all the Democrats have this funny thing. They set out this whole Me Too thing to come after Democrats, but then it snared up all of these other guys. Mm. Now it's even gone too far a little bit, I think, and stuff. But they want to ignore certain things when it comes to certain people, like Biden. Now, Biden's the next best thing, so, but these sexual complaints against him, we should ignore them, but they want all the attention when it was Kavanaugh, but ignore this stuff with Biden. You want to ignore, you know, they want to talk about the sexual assault that, you know, that that some women claim that he was having, that Trump was having sex or doing different things with him, but ignore the rape allegation of Clinton and the way his wife stepped in and did things to nullify the voices of those women. But me two people don't care about that. You ain't never going to catch me walking around D.C. with no vagina on my head. That's stupid as shit. I'm not ever going to do that dumb shit. They dumb <laughs> and their message is stupid. And it's not ever going to happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'll fuck anybody out that ever try to get me to go do some stupid shit like that. <laughs> I don't even can't stand half of these women. Half of them don't have nothing going for themselves. And they sit up there. And, and here's the thing, and, and a lot of men should be worried. Now, I'm all for, you know, women coming forward when they're being abused or there's a sexual claim, but you can't just willy-nilly just say anything and have it be said and ruin a man's life forever. And people not understanding you know, they're all for it when it's just affecting this person over here. But now it's starting to come come around. Like, he did he, the girlfriend he just had, came out and said how he forced her to get that abortion and, and do all this different stuff. All of these things, when it comes full circle, nobody wants to deal with it. Mm. You know, so you, I say to people, when you giving somebody rights away, when you're trying to take the rights away of other people, you got to be careful. 
Those are your rights too. And when you're giving them away, they're going to be used against you too. I agree. I agree. Okay. Okay. And young black men are be scared of that. Dating all the packies. Ooh. Ooh. Y'all heard that. <laughs> All right, Miss B. More anything else you'd like to add? No, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> man, it's, it's all good. I love to hear what y'all think. I love it. <laughs> well, okay. Well, I appreciate you. You know, being able to catch up. But I know you said you've been busy and you know been uh, trying to catch up. So I'm glad you were able to call in tonight and share your thoughts. And I'm glad to hear them. I look forward to hearing the rest of the conversation tonight. All right. Well, I'll talk to you soon. All right. Good night. Good night. Already, already. See, that's 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 my people right there. I rock with Miss B more. Now, if you don't like it, <clears throat> call in and speak your mind. You know what I'm saying? Call in and speak your mind. I don't know, Roger. I think if you went back and listened to that call, I think you would agree with. Um, you probably would agree with 98 percent of that call if you go back and check it out. It was a bit of a call, but I think that you would you would uh, you would probably have agreed with. Uh, a big majority of what was being said. What's the motherfucking deal? Who do we have calling into the den this evening? Oh, let me make sure I got hey, brother, how you doing? This is Rita Wilson. Rita Rejoice from California. Yes, Miss Rita, how are you doing tonight? I'm good, brother. I'm good. Finally got a chance to catch up with you. I'm not going to take long. Um, I've been following you. I think yesterday was the first day I actually listened to you. I've been doing a little venturing. Since um, I've been to the White House a couple of times, dealing with the turning point, meeting with them for the prison reform and stuff like that. And I'm just speaking on behalf of a young lady, a young woman that is from Compton, California, an ex Piru blood gang from West Side Piru in Compton. Um, I have two brothers that were killed at the hands of other black men, as well as um, just recently some. Um, some more, two more dudes were killed. Oh, yeah. One was killed by the sheriff. He was unarmed. He was unarmed as well. But what you were talking about yesterday is very true about how us as black people, and a lot of black people get mad, but like I tell them, if you never lived a life, mm-hmm. and you haven't been out there, and you haven't been shot at, you haven't sold the dope, you haven't did the dope, and you haven't done all that, you don't understand what it's like out there in the streets mm-hmm. to understand that Wrong is wrong, and right is right. So the young man, regardless of his education background, that doesn't mean that you're smart because you have an educational background and you graduated with a four-point whatever and you're going to college. The thing today with our culture as black people is that we have allowed the new rap music to bring us down. And when I speak black, I speak to all because everyone listens to black. Everyone wants to be black. Everyone wants to follow black. So when you look at YG, you know, I know him personally. I always tell young YG, you know, I don't care for your music. Hmm. For the simple fact that you're selling out your culture just Hmm. to get the dollars. And that's all it's about. The homies in the hood will promote and tell you young ones to do their dirt. And they'll push the whole agenda of you looking stupid while they go home to their nice houses up in the hills. Hmm. But you the one that just got shot and killed and you don't have another life. Because once you're dead, you're done. And this is the problem with this young man that was 20 years old that was shot by the marshal. It was justifiable. And we need to stop condoning this bullshit as people and acting like it's okay to condone other blacks to do wrong because we are in our feelings to black to any other color. You know, in California, this is a BS state right now. I don't know why anybody comes here. Mm. We're going through the most liberal poverty area out here. I mean, now, coming from a gangbanging lifestyle in the 80s, to now I work for the Sheriff's Department. Hmm. Keeps me in line. 
you know, and I still, I got my business, you know, I'm about to actually open up a business in Nevada, um, on my second home, you know, so when people say, oh, the government's keeping me down, well, see, people don't educate their mind, I used to vote Democrat, so I noticed a lot of people in the chat talks about they're all the same, mm, yeah, they're both white people game banging on each other, if you really want to look at it like a politics side, all of it's politics, bloods and crips, it's hood politics, um, Red and blue is what we stand. Politics, Democrats, Republicans, they're they're like bloods and crips. Red and blue again. So it's all type of politics out here. But this is a problem. It's as black people, what do we teach our children? And as black women, what do we teach? What do we show? Why do we demonize ourselves to try to fit in with the fake narrative? Why don't we look like queens? Why are we calling these black women and these black men kings and queens when they don't step out like kings and queens? You can't call a rapper that's telling someone in the song, I kill a lot of, uh, I kill a lot of dudes. You know, I don't want to say the N word. I don't want you to flag, but, you know. Yeah, you so speak, speak, speak your mind. We, look, I'm probably already flagged by the time I get started. I'm all over the place. So if you, if you feel it, speak it. I'm not going <laughs> to hold you back. I, I mean, you, it's a song called A Lot. You know, he said, how many niggas you killed? A lot. You know, and I'm saying, this is the type of music we shake our ass to, and we smoke and have a drink to, and we think it's all right. You know, I ride a Harley. I'm out here on the street, so people can't say, oh, she's just talking. No, I'm out here. People know me by rejoice, because when I pull up on my hog, they know I'm about to get off my bike and I'm going to preach. Hmm. I don't need a motorcycle club or a gang banging thing to... Uh, make me who I am. God already made me somebody. I don't need to affiliate my name no more with a blood gang or anything else. I am who I am. And I educate and I teach young black women out here because I'm in these streets talking to prostitutes, talking to gang members, talking to people that sell dope, out here talking about prison reform, letting black folks know, look, there's a lot of stuff going on, but you allow any illegal immigrants to come out here. Why is that our battle? First of all, in Compton, Watts, in Los Angeles, we don't own a lot of businesses out there. But you have a lot of illegal immigrants that come here, and they're able to own all type of businesses. And we're what? We're fussing about, oh, Trump is a racist. Oh, we're, he should allow them to come over here. Why? Because your lazy ass won't get up and do the job that they're doing? Because you're complaining to sit your ass at home and play on PS4? You're a grown-ass man. Get off your butt. Work at them hotels. Clean them toilets. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. stop complaining. That's the problem with the community and the culture today. It's because we teach our children like they're supposed to shoot off to the top from high school. No, you're not going to do that. You have to crawl before you can walk and run. And that young man that was killed in Memphis, people saw, they watched this young man post all that garbage. If you're an educated young man or woman, you're going to act accordingly. You're not going to step out on everything else the world is doing. You should be a leader and not a follower. You should be, if anything, brainwashing people with the knowledge you got instead of brainwashing people with things that you found out from somebody else. You couldn't even understand his conversation because he didn't know how to use words correctly. Then you got the dude in the car with him rolling around in his car and showing a gun. I mean, come on now. If you're going to do it right, do it the right way. I make sure as a black woman, I know I'm a black woman. I don't need nobody to tell me that. And I know that things happen. And I know that we have bad police, just like we got bad civilians. So guess what? I'm going to do things the right way, get my concealed carry weapon so I can have a fully loaded arm on me at all times so that I will not get into the system because I don't have one that is certified. People do things the right way. Yes, things still happen. But if you continue to push the fake narrative of the fake agenda, you will always fall in the trap of what's wrong. And then you have no backup. When I'm dead and gone, can't nobody say I posted garbage or I walked and talked garbage. They can see that I actually was a real one. And yes, I stand for Jesus Christ. Yes, I fall short. No, I'm not perfect. But I take a train of people out here and educate them on better ways to go. And I start with my own color, black folks. Those that don't want to listen, those that don't like me, keep it pushing. I love you, but I don't like you.
that's all, brother. <laughs> well, I got a question for you. I got a question for you. <clears throat> okay. Because cause what, you, what you said earlier, and it seemed like a major transition. So what was it that, what, what was the moment that, that hit you when maybe you made you realize that, okay, hey, you know, this, this thing with the bloods, this ain't, this ain't it. I got to make a change in my life. And then what was it that got you with the, the sheriff's department? Well, back in, I'm 48 now. So back in 1984, uh, when I was selling dope, you know, and doing my thing in the hood, um, the first thing that should have got me, it, it, only thing it did was make me start dating Crip. Mm. Then I married a Crip. Mm. So my homeboy got killed in front of me by some dudes from um, a Crip neighborhood while we were selling on the corner. Shot him in the head, um, brains. Who I said they shot him in the head with a gauge. Um, but what really got me out was when I was raped in the alley, the South Central LA, with a knife in my throat, mm. um, on a couch. And um, I could have caught anything, anything that had happened. I could have, I could have got killed, but you know, it, I didn't. That woke me up 50 percent, and what woke me up all the way is that I used to be a thief. I knew how to shuck and drive the game real tight. Thank God my thieving didn't give me a felony mm -hmm. that I was still able to get a job with the police department. And when I got that chance of this guy telling me, look, you are a good woman. You are a good young lady. You didn't come from this type of background because he knew my family and stuff. And he, you know, he talked to me. He sat with me and he said, you know, I'm going to give you the opportunity, but I ain't going to slap a misdemeanor on you, mm -hmm. which he did which was a petty theft misdemeanor. And he could have got me for grand theft. But he didn't. So ever since then, I just applied for the sheriff's department. Um, first, I started off with the Compton Police Department, got hired as a dispatcher, and took off from there. And ever since then, I've been doing it, and that keeps me in line with, you know, what I do, because if I wasn't with them, it's so easy to go back, because I'm always going to be flesh and spiritual, but... People are ready to touch and provoke you at any time that can make you go backwards. And it's really hard living out here. You know, I can only speak on California. California has its own little fake agendas going on. We have a bad government system. And what's so sad is that people don't realize. And I know, brother, you know where I'm going with Lyndon B. Johnson. See, this is what black people don't realize is that Lyndon B. Johnson was a Democratic and he was the turnaround. And the turnaround for him is when he told them in a meeting, not black people, but when he told other white liberal people that I would keep those Negroes, which he didn't say Negroes, he said niggers, mm -hmm. voting Democrat for 200 years. He will give the black woman food stamp, Section 8, anything free, as long as she kept that nigger man out the house. And see, people today do not educate themselves. They don't understand what's going on. If you don't want to vote, don't vote. I'd rather say you're not to, especially if you're going to vote the wrong way. And if you're not going to educate yourself like I used to. But the moment you realize that this agenda is being pushed on our children, nieces and nephews and other little kids, and we already know what agenda that is, you know, to brainwash the mind of kids thinking that they're one way and they shouldn't be this way. So if you don't see it, You'll never realize it, you know. But yeah, it took a it took that for me to get where I am, brother. Okay, okay. Well, I appreciate you sharing that with us, man. That was a very, very powerful, powerful call. And uh, I mean, is there anything else that you would like to add? Um, no. I, hopefully, I'll be back on the show with you, and um, hopefully, I can get you on the show with me. Um, I don't know what states you're in, but I'm gonna be doing some traveling soon. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm also speaking at um, one of the Trump rallies. They call me Compton Conservative. <laughs> okay. A lot of people. <laughs> yeah, they call me Compton Conservative. And, you know, it's like it's like when you deal with so many people. I mean, you know, I deal with, um, I don't know if you heard of the game. He's a rapper out here, the game. Yeah. And um, yeah. dude named Blueface, his manager, you mm -hmm. know, and his wife were real tight. My brother's out there a lot, too. But one thing, they, they respect me for who I am. You know, they can talk all the trash they want to, but when I come around, they know it's a conservative time. Yeah. Don't bring that liberal mess. And, you know, to add to it is that most black folks really don't realize that we are conservative. Yeah. In I our agree. lifestyle. I agree. We, 
we are not liberal people. Though that was something that was pushed on us to be that way because I mean Malcolm X he had so many different speeches about liberals and Democrats that was the Dixie Party and I mean it was so much that they did not let us hear or even us reaching out and reading about Malcolm X talked about the Fox and you know what I'm talking about how he said the two one is going to utilize comedians and he said it he said what white person uses a, a white person that's a comedian or a, a celebrity to, to get their stuff out there? But they use the black people to get the stuff out there like the Democrats are doing. Jay-Z, you know, Beyonce, all these people. And at the same time, those black people, they don't care nothing about you. They got what they wanted. And they using us to get what they need, money. Okay. Well, yeah, well, I, I am in Texas, and so, you know, just kind of... Oh, you know, okay. Yeah, so I can, uh, you know, like I say, I definitely love to, to get some more conversation going with you. And so, you know, just uh, we can we can converse through email or whatever's most convenient for you, and uh, let's, let's work something out. Okay, and I hope to get you out here. I don't know if you know Brandon Tatum, we, um, and Tony X is running in um, New York, but I want to get some brothers out here, and I'd like to add you to the agenda um, out here to talk at a, it's going to be a black empowerment um, it's actually for men, black men empowerment movement and talking about a lot of things because we have no leadership and you can't find a lot of black men that are in leadership like that like you know you had Martin you had Malcolm, you had different blacks that were really out there in a positive way and when you have someone like Nipsey, you know I told Nipsey Many times, but he brushed it off. Leave the hood. You know, now you got the 60s that are fighting with his family because they feel like, oh, what's up with us? Yeah. Where's our part? Wow. You know, so, you know, it's it's like I'm not pro-black at all. Mm-hmm. I'm pro-God. I'm pro-guns. I'm pro-life. And that's what I stand for. Okay. Okay. Well, Miss uh, Compton Conservative, I'm, I'm glad to hear your story. I'm glad to get to know you a little bit. And I look forward to talking to you in the near future. Okay, thank you, brother. Have a good one. All right, you too. Thank you for calling. Thanks. Bye-bye. Shout out to Miss uh, Rejoice. Very interesting call. Very interesting call. I'm telling you, man, it's, uh, it's some stories out there. And again, it's, it's good to hear something, you know, relatable. <clears throat> interesting. <laughs> Miss Meach, you've been acting up. Where, where your call? I'm looking. I'm looking for your area code. I, I need to hear from you, Miss Meat. Very interesting. Very interesting, though. Um, here's my thing, man. Here's my thing. Again, I'll tell y'all. I don't. I don't. I don't necessarily see myself aligning with with any party. But again, like I said earlier in the stream, that. I do lean more conservative on a lot of views, and this is from my own personal experiences. And I can't knock somebody's experience. Cannot knock. Cannot, you know, I don't know what you've been through, haven't walked in your shoes. Um, but I'd like to hear your reasons for supporting what you support for why you feel the way you feel. To me, I think that is important. It's very important to understand. So, so we've had two ladies called, both black women. And to me, well, Miss uh, B. Moore says she's independent. Miss Rejoice says she's conservative. And uh, I'd like to hear, I'd like to hear some folks from the other side. I wanna know how y'all feel and why. I wanna know what y'all think and why. Because I think this is very important to know. I want to know what it is. Because again, I want to know if you are leaning left. I want to know who it is that you 
But again, I know a lot of people don't like to talk about who they want to vote for. So I won't ask you who you're voting for, but I want to know why it is. And I know Miss Me shared a story the other day, and very understandable, extremely understandable as to why she feels the way she feels. But I'd like to hear, you know, from other people why they why they feel the way they do. Is it something that they've just always done? Is it an association that they have with the other side? And here's a question I was going to ask, and I meant to ask, and I forgot to ask. What would it take for you to vote for the opposite party that you support? What would it take for you to say, hey, if you're a conservative, what would it take for you to say, I'm going to, I'm going to vote Democrat this season or this year, this election season? What would it take for you if you are a, wait, did I say Democrat? I got advice first. <laughs> what would it take if you're a Democrat to vote for a Republican? Because I'm going to be honest, right now, I know people say, oh, what has Trump done? What has Trump done? An issue that impacts a lot of us, and an issue that a lot of the, the left has been pushing, which is, you know, criminal justice reform and a lot of these things. You've seen a lot of that happen with the First Step Act. I was looking at that the other day. Right now, I believe it's, uh, I forgot what the numbers were. It was, it was, it was over a thousand and some change. You know, uh, prisoners have applied for it, and a lot of those sentences have been reduced. I want to say up to, on average, about thirty percent. Ninety-seven percent of those sentences or those prisoners are black. You know, and so I'd like to know what you think and why you feel that way. I would love to hear it. Look, the line is open. The line is open for everybody. I want to know how you feel, what you think, and why. I love it. I love it because people get riled up over politics. <laughs> yes, the, the wild coon in its habitat. What is this? Oh, my fault. I apologize for your ears. Well, what's the motherfucking deal? Who do we have calling in to the den this evening? Hello, hello. Testing, one, two, three, four. Mic check, one, two, one, two. Hello, hello, hello. Well, somebody, somebody in booty dial. Hello? Hello, hello, yes. What kind of coonery is going on in here? I don't know. You called in. You 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 the calling coon. What's up? What's up? Who we got calling in to the den this evening? Oh man, the police behind me. I gotta call back. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that might be a den first. Oh, great. Only in the dead. Only in the dead. Um. <laughs> that was, that was, that was great. That was great. Yeah, they're going to call back. Who, who is the last call? Who is this? Who's on this phone? Look, I sent, I sent them, goddamn it, you know. Call, call me a coon, goddamn I got you. I'm calling people on your ass. <laughs> mm. That was hilarious. That was, that was hilarious. Unless somebody goes to jail, then that's, that's not hilarious. But, uh, oh, man. 
I don't even want to talk about that. So, I mean, I, I want to know. And again, <clears throat> I want to know again. You know, what is it? What is it that makes you feel the way you felt? For the most part, I got a question. I'll, I'll do a quick poll, all right? I want to know, type a zero if you've always... Uh, uh, well, good grief. There we go. Okay, we'll do a quick poll in just a second. Remind me of the quick poll after this call because I'm going to forget what I was going to say. What's the motherfucking deal? Who do we have calling into the den this evening? Good evening. Good evening. Miss Meat 37. Miss Meat 37. My favorite Miss Meat of all. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> you're, not, you're not liking me yeah. right now. You're not liking me right now. What's on your mind, Miss No, Meat? I do. I do. Okay. I do. Okay. I love uh, debating and conflict and shit like that. I love shit like that. That's, 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 I love it. Okay. And, and, you know, and I don't judge people for what they say. Okay. Except for Heidi. Mm. But anyway, <laughs> fuck with you, Heidi. Listen, <laughs> Heidi, all right with me. Because she keep it real. I judge Heidi. I can't stand her. I can't, I can't stand her. She's every night. Nice. Heidi, get on my goddamn yeah, nerve. I don't even know how she got yeah, away. Yeah, she do the same. <laughs> but hey, she consistent. <laughs> Listen, we like a consistent motherfucker. She mm -hmm. consistent. <laughs> but, uh, you know, for the last caller, she's uh, not not the one that the police was behind. That shit was funny. <laughs> who was that? Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm not. I'm not sure exactly who that was. I have an idea, but I ain't, I ain't all the way positive. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that was funny. But the call before that, hey, congratulations to that sister. She made it out. She made it out the hood. And one thing I'm not is a hater. Now. You can't, um, like, call all black women or black men stupid or dumb because um, we don't follow your president. I mean, I'm just saying, okay. So I've been, I, this, like, a lot of people just start following Donald Trump when he became president. Man, I've been following, I watched his reality shows. Oh, it's lost. So this this has been years for me with Trump. So I I have a reason to feel like I feel, and I knew once he ran <clears throat> for president this time after Barack, he was gonna win. And I told everybody this. I said Hillary's not gonna win because first of all, men are men in the U.S. of A. The United States of America is not gonna follow orders from a woman. We're not ready for that. Okay. So I knew Trump was going. He's going to win this next time, too. He is. Why do you I'm think not he, taking that away. Why do you think he'll win this next time? Because he is. It's, it's just going to happen. He's going to win. They're not going to impeach him. If they do, oh, God, that's going to be, like, the shock of the world. But he's going to win. He's going to win 2020. I'm going to still vote, and I'm still going to vote. Even if I have to write my own name in, I'm still going to go vote. Not to say I'm going to vote for Democrat, because they, like I told y'all on the call what, about a week ago, they act like asses too. So I'm still going to vote. But now you can't force the agenda on all of us. Hey, it's cool. You believe what you believe. That's fine. But my thing about it is, like, I don't call no Republicans or who, who the person who actually voted for him dumb because that's who you wanted to vote for. That's your right. Okay? When I speak on politics, I speak about the actual person like Donald Trump, Obama, and whoever. I speak about them. But you can't say that because your black ass decided to follow Trump that I'm stupid because I don't. Because that's, that, that, that's just not the way it goes. Like, this United States of America, remember, uh, we're free. I'm saying I'm free to vote and choose who I like. That's what gets me. I'm glad that you educated. I'm glad that you took the necessary steps like I did to get out the hood. Like I did. I had no guidance. I'm glad you took the necessary steps. I'm glad you are where you are. I'm not a hater. Thumbs up to you. Don't tell me I'm a dummy for not thinking the way you think. I mean, this is the United States. I can think of how the fuck I want to think. I mean, it is what it is, you know. And <clears throat> one thing about me, like I said, I can sit here and have a de debate with you all day long. But I'm not going to feel bad about you. I'm not going to call you names. 
I'm not going to say you don't do this. I'm not going to say you're not, uh, you're uneducated. I'm not going to say that because you have a different view than me. That's what I'm saying. I'm glad everybody has. That's what makes this world go round. That's what makes the United States free. Everybody has different views and different situations and different experiences. I, I told y'all about my experience with Barack because I think all politicians lie. But when I got to keep my daughter on till she was 26, that's what did it for me, for him. Whether it's just another reason why other people like him, that's fine. But for Donald Trump, I did not just start following him. I've been following this man for a long time. I didn't follow him every time he go for, you know, presidential. And he this ain't like this. What kills me is people think this is the first time he did it. No, it's not. He just never got in. He just never got past that point. And it's, and whoever like him and whoever think he did a great job, hey, kudos to you. But I'm telling you how I feel. It doesn't mean I'm not educated or I don't know about politics or I don't follow politics. That's what kills me about this whole situation. Because you black and you wanted to vote for Donald Trump, hey, that's on you, boo. Hey, I don't understand it. I don't get it. I don't. Because I guarantee you, you don't give a fuck about your black ass. Hey, that's neither here nor there. But don't call every other black person stupid because we don't want to follow him. That, that's, that's where they do that at. Come on now. Okay. Everybody's not stupid because they don't follow your views. Hey, I'll never agree. I will never Never, ever. You can call me all kind of dummies. You can call me stupid. You can call me uneducated. You can call me whatever. I will never agree that Donald Trump is a good president. Never. None of them. None of them have our, our interest in heart. But my experience is this. I've been voting since I was 18. But my experience, no matter if they was white or black, my experience in presidency is only one president helped my current situation. And that was Barack Obama. He helped my current situation with my daughter. Like, I didn't have to take her off my insurance when she was 21. So she got to live a whole number five, six years. So that's my experience. Educated or not educated, because all presidents to me, have none of our interests at heart. They just want to get in there. Hey, they're not looking at the little peon. They're not looking at us like that. But I had a great experience with one, and it changed my life. That don't make me dumb. That don't make me uneducated. Okay. I got a question for you, though. <clears throat> Okay, so that's your experience, and and that's why I say I mentioned that in a little earlier stream that I respect it because you had a legitimate reason as to why you liked Barack Obama, but do you believe that when it comes to the majority of people, black folks especially, they just automatically lean one way without doing their due diligence into presidential candidates? The women. <laughs> A woman is not going to, you know what, maybe not even in my lifetime, because I'm not young. But one thing about America is a man is going to control this. Listen, y'all can call me a lie. Oh, she lied. This and that. But no man in America is going to take orders from a woman. It's just not going to happen. The only woman that I think might stand a chance might be, you might get assassinated, so I, I, I don't want her to. The only woman that might stand a chance is Michelle Obama, and I don't even want her to. And she won't even make it because it's just not going to happen in America. It's just not going to happen. And that um, Kamala <clears throat> Harris, everybody was like, Ooh, a black woman running. Ooh, a black woman running. I said, let me see what she did. Let me see what, let me see what she's about. No, I don't like her. She won't get my vote. She won't get my vote. Mm -mm. Nope. 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 She won't get my
she would not get my vote. So she might as well have several. She might as well go to Madison Square Garden and walk in that door and all them seats. She see in there, she might as well have them. Because I'm not voting for her. I'm not voting for her. Hmm. Okay. She's going she gonna to go to Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Because she's looking for you. She what? I said she's going to go to Mercedes-Benz Stadium because she's looking for you. No, okay. See, we won't invite her into the Mercedes Benz Stadium. Okay, that's now. Rise up. See, stop it. Because every time I hang up the phone, you be on that bullshit. When I hang up the phone, then I can't say nothing. Stop that bullshit now. See, I gotta gotta take See, advantage of the situation. Y'all. When we play, y'all. Uh, well, yeah, somewhere, I somewhere. The, my schedule some, ain't came in the mail some, yet. Somewhere in the middle of the season. It, it don't matter. Y'all gonna take that L. You look, y'all probably gonna beat us, but I'm oh, talking shit anyway. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see. But um, yeah, that's just my view on it. I just don't think people have the right to call somebody dumb or uneducated because they don't feel the same way they feel, regardless of what it is. Like I said, I'm so happy for the sister. I'm glad. Listen, it's hard to get past rape. I've been through it. It's hard to get past the hood. I've been through it. Gangs, I've been through it. But don't call somebody uneducated because they don't agree with you. Don't do that. That's just, it's just, just not right. Okay, okay. I can understand your feelings on that. I can definitely understand how you feel about that. But I'm going to let somebody else call me. All I'm right. going to listen. I'll holler at y'all. Okay, when you get off this line, I'm going to talk shit, so be ready. Nah, nah, rise up. Rise <laughs> the fuck up. <laughs> ATL, ho. Rise up. Atlanta Falcons, B. Mm. Sit, sit, sit your ass down. I love you, Miss Meat. <laughs> you know, I got I got to press Miss Meat every time she called in about this shit. Only because we played this year. Any other year, I wouldn't give a shit. Um, <clears throat> okay, I can understand your feelings about that, but I think you know. I think it's this. I don't think it's necessarily personal. I think that what it is is the majority of black people. We automatically lean one particular way automatically and i don't think unlike miss me i don't think most most black folks i don't think most people period really do research or do their due diligence in to you know why they vote the way they do i think a lot of them are influenced by you know maybe their parents or their community or you know maybe somebody saying something they like maybe it's an artist that they like Again, my, my big beef with the Democrats is that I feel like they pander. They pander uh, more so. Is it, is it Mercedes Benz in Atlanta? Is it, 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 yeah, I think, I think they might. You know, Mercedes Benz, they buy all, all the states going to be Mercedes Benz. I don't know. Um, but my thing is this. That's the thing that gets to me. That's the thing I noticed maybe more. Maybe I'm more annoyed at the tactics than anything, you know. Because uh, I talk about, you know, when, when Hillary had the, the whole, we, we all know the hot sauce thing. And we know Roland Martin and the, the wobble thing. And we know the, the Beyonce Jay-Z concert. You know, like, ain't nobody keep pounding. Ain't no keep pounding. Ain't no rise up. All these terrible, terrible ass sayings. I ain't gonna. I don't even think the Texans have a saying. Rock and roll Texans. That shit is terrible. Uh, <laughs> but you know, uh, to me that that's the thing that bothers me because it's almost like, where is the real policy? What are you? Where, where where's the plan? What are you gonna lay down and say? Hey, this is what we're gonna do. This is what we're gonna do differently than we've done the last 50, 60 years. This is where we're going to enact some real change, and this is how you're going to benefit from it, you know. But for the most part, I don't feel like they see that. See, they just say, "Hey, oh, good grief!" Uh oh, let's see what's happening. Uh, they was calling back. I was like, maybe they, but they must not have got busted. <laughs> yeah, vote or die with P Diddy, right? Do y'all really? Uh, oh, quick poll. I got you. I forgot what the quick poll is going to be. Now I remember now, but. Here's my thing. I want to know. I want you to type a zero if you've always been affiliated with the current party that you're, you, you, you intend to vote for. I wanted you to type a one if you have changed over the course of your life. And I'm just curious to, to find out who. 
Um, no, stop that, Savage. We shall not. We shall not trade Hopkins. It's the only constant that we've had that's been quality. Um, <clears throat> because I want y'all to be realistic. You think the same party that's uh, promoting AOC and, and this 70% tax <clears throat> after 10 million, all of these, what what is uh, Jay-Z a billionaire now? You think that um, he wants to pay a 70% tax on his money? He'll get y'all to do it. He'll tell y'all to do it. Beyonce will tell y'all to do it. You motherfuckers making money hand over fist. You think they really want to come off 70% of their money? And I'm not saying that is what's going to happen, but you have some of these other politicians who are in cahoots with AOC. But do you think that they're going to they're going to to rock with that? I don't care what the celebrities think. I want to know what Mr. Robert Smith thinks. That's what I give a damn about. What look, look, he he did it without having to entertain. He did it without having to do any of that shit. <clears throat> he laid out a foundation and it was real legit. Okay. Okay, so I see a lot of people have, have chips, sweet berries. See, that's what's uh, God, God damn sweet berries. You can't, you can't trust them. Uh, two is not an option. You're just doing some extra stuff. You, you women folk, godly. Um, okay, so I see a lot of people have kind of changed their, their perspectives. And a lot of the people who are, who are saying one, I have a question. Was it from Democrat, Democrat, Democrats? That would be a great cartoon. If you want to indoctrinate the children... Forget all the, the, the LGBT pride stuff. Make a cartoon called Democats, and you have all the, the children solidified for the future. But if you typed one, was it from Democrat to Republican or vice versa? I, I'd like to know. You know, I don't think anybody really cares. Honestly. Republican, independent? Okay. Okay. Them rep, okay, interesting. You know, um, okay, okay, very interesting, very interesting. <clears throat> so a lot of people, is it, is it, is it the walk away? Is it the, what, what do you mean? I'm, I'm curious. And <clears throat> for those of you who who switch from Democrat to Republican, I think that it changes a lot as you get older. And you have experiences as you see things, as you start to get more established in life. Um, I think that changes a lot of people's perspectives. So I think that's that's very uh, interesting. Very interesting. 60 years of lives. Okay. Obama changed your mind. All right. Okay. Thank you, Miss Rejoice. I appreciate you being able to join us this evening. And like I said, I look forward to hearing from you in the near future. Interesting, interesting. So how many people, how many of you, <clears throat> and I think this is a much bigger thing now than it has been. And, and this is another issue that I think I have with what the left is pushing it again. You've heard more about the identity politics. You've heard more about the LGBT thing. You've heard more about that immigration. You've heard more about these issues to me than you've heard about issues that are impacting the majority of American citizens. Let's talk about the economy. Let's talk about jobs. People want to know, or they want to at least feel like, what are you going to do to make sure that I have a future that I can continue to, you know, live the life that I want to live, that I want to be able to care for my kids. I want to be able to finance a lifestyle that I enjoy. Um, <clears throat> I think a lot of that has to do with it because you don't really hear a lot of that. You ask certain questions and you're, you're not getting the answers that you want. Let me see. Got my ear. Look at this down. I'll be ringing in my sleep tonight. All right. What's the motherfucking deal? Who do we have calling into the den this evening? Hey, you can hear me all right on this? Yes, yes, loud and clear. All right, hey, man, this is a giant mess. Giant mess. What's on your mind this evening? How are you feeling this evening, giant mess? You know, I was thinking about going Democrats and Republicans, and I was thinking about the whole thing with Democrats today. And it all goes back 
for me and it's just like the way things are right now and I was thinking about mainly money and people thinking about the long run and I was thinking you know with Republicans you know as far as Republicans go and it's like of course big corporations you know they they do want to hoard money but you know when it comes to that it's like well of course because they're making things and they're wanting to bring money in and they're going to create more stuff they're going to open more businesses but that's going to also bring in more people from outside because you're going to think well we're making money over here but if you really think about it look at all these like immigrants that are coming here legally like i mean like gas station owners are coming here i mean like i've seen so many like i mean most of the people that are around here to where I live, a lot of them are foreigners that own these gas stations. Like, you know, like, and especially like the Burger Kings and McDonald's and all these places, a lot of these ain't really, the, the buildings themselves aren't built by the actual corporation. They're built by people who are, who rent the name, but buy the goods from the corporate office. And then they keep a lot of the profits, but still rent the name, so they get a, so the corporate office gets a kickback. So I mean, like that, the, that's pretty much how a lot of these places work. But Democrats, you know, a lot of that could go away really quickly, and a lot of these places could close down, like they said with the seventy percent on ten million. Could you imagine a wholesaler company, you know, who sells, who creates something and it has to find all the parts for it, creates it, and then sell it for real cheap just so that a store will get it, sells it for three times the price. But this little wholesaler had to sell it for that cheap ass price. But yet they're still having to pay 10 mil that that seventy percent on that ten million. Yeah, it's just very damaging. Right. I mean, we'd have uh, imagine how much shit we'd have to get from overseas, and then imagine if if then you they would still have to imagine if tariffs were put on that stuff. That's, that's definitely gonna be a <clears throat> definitely gonna be a problem. <laughs> and I was thinking about that because I was like, man, you can, can you imagine? You know the the especially poverty level people trying to buy stuff and things like that. I mean, like <laughs> trying to buy stuff and especially foods and things like that. Trying to buy equipment even to to raise food would be a pain in the ass have to basically use your hands just to <laughs> God, uh, you're going back into the dark ages <laughs> exactly basically have to take down trees and whittle that shit <laughs> how, how much is that pay an hour huh I said, how, how much would that pay an hour <laughs> oh shit I don't know I couldn't imagine that shit. But yeah, I was just thinking about all that stuff, and I was thinking about what the Democrats wanted to do, and I was thinking about what they said about, like, when, uh, about all the money and things that they want to do with all the programs. And I was thinking, you know, even with all the programs that they want to do and all the money that they want to put everywhere, like, say, like, when we took the money out of Brazil after the caravan started trying to come here. And I was thinking that they said, well, wouldn't the money help if we gave them back the money? And I was thinking, well, they were still trying to come here before that. And apparently the money isn't going to where they 
we were trying to give them for it. Hmm. Otherwise, these people would have been happily situated down there or something. So the government's obviously sticking it in their pocket and then telling the citizens to go fuck themselves. Hmm. And what kind of what kind of and government Trump do they have down there? Hmm? What kind of government do they have down there? I mean, do you think it's capitalist? A capitalist society? I think it would be more government run if anything. I mean, I would think it would be, I'd probably say it was kind of like the same situation, maybe more of a police state from what I've seen. Like, you know how the, uh, maybe more territorial, I can't say the word some reason it won't roll off my tongue <clears throat> you saying like territorial or yeah uh, yeah okay. exactly okay. 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 kind of like some situation between like maybe a police state and maybe some territorialistic you know between maybe the gangs and maybe the police You know, yeah. I mean, I'm just getting this from like the videos that I've seen about the place and okay. things like that. But it's, yeah. I mean, some of the citizens seem like they're in a bad position down there, and I don't think the government's helping much. Hmm. And it doesn't seem like it's get it was getting any better, even with the help that w with. I mean, it wasn't much help, but it was you know something, and even with the funds that they were getting, they weren't really doing much. But, so, I don't know. I mean, like, it was the same thing, you know, with, you know, even with the, like, uh, the things we were doing, pretty much anywhere where we put boots on ground, you know, there ain't really a lot you can do with things like that and you push money and it just doesn't really do much by itself mm -hmm. unless you really just all out just go martial law on it really put push a curfew and say hey look you either do this or else you really can't do much after that So do you think that's where certain certain people are trying to take America into a more maybe <clears throat> government run or socialist type society? Well, I think with America as it is right now, we're half socialist as it is and we make it work in some fashion or another, but I think we are at it in a wrong way sort of where we can head to bankruptcy at a tipping point one way or another but I think it's more because of how the money is spent because like right now with the like say like the welfare system like the welfare system as it is, it does get a lot of money, but it doesn't get as much money as people think it does. Like, it, it gets about as much as NASA does, and even NASA, NASA doesn't get that much money a year. Like, um, I think... I'm trying to remember the thing that I saw. But I think NASA is like NASA and welfare are like one of the bottom four things 
on the list of the things that get of the things that get payouts hmm. as far as the money on taxes every year. And the, also the other thing is is that as far as businesses go, when businesses pay taxes, a lot of businesses, especially like hospitals, many hospitals will pay taxes between like two and four times a year, depending on how much they make. Hmm. I've read up on this sometime, somewhat. So, you know, so got to understand it. I don't know how Donald Trump got away with some of the stuff that he did, but that bankruptcy helped. So, <laughs> right. use use the system in your favor. Huh? So you got to use the system in your favor. Mhm. Mm okay. okay. Yeah. So. Right. Anything else you would like to add there, uh, John Miss? <sighs> No, I was just thinking about the uh, the way the Democrats are working the, the system as it is right now. And I was thinking, uh, I mean, like, the Republicans are probably our best bet for the next few years. But, I mean, like, as far as the things are going, I mean, like, every eight, four to eight years, things just basically get a Band-Aid put back on it. So... You never know how things are going to go in the next eight years. But. <laughs> so that's basically how it goes every eight years. You know what I mean? It's just like, well, we're just wiping that slate clean. Here's, here's some new bills. I agree. I agree. It's the same. You know, it's a lot of it's a lot of can kicking. You know, kicking the can down the road. Let the next situation get taken care of by somebody else. I think a lot of that does happen. <clears throat> exactly. I mean, right after Clinton, George Bush came in. Oh, here's a bunch of new shit. <laughs> yeah. So, same thing with everybody else. Right afterwards. Yeah, so all right, man. You take care now. All right, John Missman. I appreciate your call, man. Yep, take care. All right, you too. You know, I don't care what y'all talking about. Y'all can, can keep sitting here, you know, living here tripping. I'm going to Mars on y'all. And y'all ain't allowed to come out here if I gotta wear a space helmet looking like Sandy the Squirrel and shit. What's the motherfucking deal? Who we have calling into the den this evening? What's up, man? It's Ferocious. Ferocious. What's the motherfucking deal, man? How you feeling about tonight's topic, man? Uh, well, I mean, it's about political agenda versus ethics, right? Yes. So what's, what's really, like, what does that mean? Like, like, good versus, good and bad versus what's the real intent? What basically the agenda is what's really going on, you know, what are they pushing the message they're pushing out of uh, compared to what should be going on? What's what's the stand up move as compared to what's really happening? Well, I don't really know. I can't really talk about, you know, the whole United States. Cause personally, I think the United States has just got too big too quick for its own good. That's why it's not really developing. As, as fast as it should be for such being such a big ass country but uh you know down here in texas you know what i'm saying uh we got the uh the governor what's his name greg abbott i think mm -hmm. something like that abbott yeah Sign, you know he's signing all these signing all these bills and shit and uh he signed, he signed a couple bills you know one saying uh that the plumbers don't have to have licenses no more what? Basically, anybody can do the plumbing. What? Yeah. <clears throat> Some, yeah, that that was about a couple of weeks ago. And uh, about, a, about a week or two after that, he signed a bill saying uh, you can carry, like, basically basically saying, like, you know, you can carry more weapons without having to have registration or, and shit like knives, uh, what do you call it, brass knuckles. Uh, you know, it's just different, different shit that you can use to attack somebody. And I'm over here thinking, like, man, you know, the Midwest, 
because you know, I mean, Texas. Would you consider Texas the part of the Midwest? I, mean, I know Scarface started out repping at the Midwest. Yeah, that's a that's a. I pretty much consider. Yeah, that's a, that's a debate for me. I know a lot of people call it the Midwest. I know depending on where in the country you are, you know, people call it different things. I always consider it the South because we touching the southern border. I mean, shit. I mean, how much further south do you get? But I think yeah. people look at it differently. Well, I, you know, me, I, personally, I consider it the Midwest, mm -hmm. and I consider it, I consider it to be, you know, being lit on fire, mm -hmm. the whole Midwest, because uh, I mean, look, you got it all the way up down, up from Chicago with all the killings going on. Now you got them doing the agenda down here, where I mean, basically, what I'm trying to say is like, okay, this, just, this is a scenario that I thought, I thought about when I seen all these bills getting signed in. So basically, you, you can hire anybody to do your plumbing. Yeah. The motherfucker don't know what he's doing. He basically can just, hey, you know, give me six hundred dollars. I'll go down there and take a look, and then, you know, I ain't gonna do shit. I'm gonna just walk out with your money. Mm -hmm. Now he can. Now they can carry fucking weapons on them legally. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's just it's gonna start. It's just bad. Uh, it's bad. It's bad. You know. You know what I'm saying? This fucking fight's gonna ensue because people are gonna get mad and shit. I don't know why. I, I really don't understand what, what what the governor's doing, to be honest. Um, With a situation like and that, it, it though, bothers me a lot. Would you would you say it's on it's on the individual to to be smart about who they choose as a plumber? Do you think that those who actually have licenses will still have the advantage, or do you think people are going to try to be cheap and go with somebody who may not have, you know, the proper certification? Yeah, well, uh, that's another thing. You know, down here in Texas, it's seven twenty. You know, low low uh, low pay. What you call it minimum wage, seven twenty five an hour. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you can't move out, you can't live on your own for seven twenty five an hour. You can't do it. I mean shit, you're gonna have to you have to sell some drugs or something. You're gonna have to sell some something, something to to move out on your own on seven twenty five an hour. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, they, they got everybody scratching like rats, trying to get trying to scrape trying to fight for the hours just so they can get forty hours a week. Mm -hmm. You know, you know what I'm saying? Even if you, uh, even if you full time, even if you, even if you full time, they want to sign you on part time, so they don't, they don't have to give you all the benefits, save save some money on their part. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just we 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 really down here in Texas. We, I know I know it's a great state and all that, but you know we we're not getting our money's worth down here, to be honest. And when it comes to paying for shit like a plumber, you know what I'm saying? Like shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you could you can go out and get the license, dude. But I mean, if you fucking work and making only like eight, nine, ten dollars an hour, you ain't gonna really want to spend that money hiring the license, dude. When you know, you know, you can fucking hire somebody else that's that's you know, word of mouth. You they know what they're doing, and uh, you know, so and so says they did work on their house, and so and so says, you know, I cut for them and shit like that. So. I mean, yeah, you would be putting your, it's, it's a risk versus reward kind of thing going on there. Not really much like, like, like the dude that we were talking about the other day, the, uh, the dude who got shot five times for his Facebook mm -hmm. post or whatever, what the fuck it was. Yeah. That, that motherfucker was just straight slipping. Yeah. And, and, you know, these people are, these people are just getting set up. It's, you know, it's the difference between, between slipping and getting set up. Mm -hmm. And yeah, these people are just—they just get set up, and I feel like it's just setting it up. I—I I, I mean, I'm for real with you. I feel like he's fucking. In, I feel like he's in the Democrats' pocket. You know what I'm saying? I feel like he's setting this up to fucking cause a whole bunch of hell, and then we gonna fucking—you know—the Democrats gonna come in here because they already know they're trying to turn Texas blue into a blue state. Yeah, and I don't know people are like that. That shit will never happen. But you know, you gotta. If you, people don't realize, is that a whole bunch of people are coming from California, moving, coming from these blue states and moving here. Mm -hmm. And I've met people in I've met people in Houston that moved from California and other places. They they openly admit that they're trying to trying to turn Houston, trying to turn Texas into a blue state. Mm -hmm. So it don't matter really much what you think. If you think the state will never be a democratic state. These motherfuckers can come here from anywhere and just they'll be a text in the day they sleep here and wake up. That's it. They're texting the day they go to to the, to get their state issued ID. That's it. They're texting. They don't have to be no 
loyalty involved. There's no loyalty program involved and nothing like that. So Texas, you know, you know, you shit. It can be a blue state. It can be. And it, I'm, I'm just saying, man. I mean, I'm I'm kind of scared that it's turning into a, it's turning into a blue state. And I, I mean, if it, if it, if it keeps going that way, I'll be the fuck. I'm getting the fuck out of Texas, bro. I am. Okay, well, where would you go? What's up? If you were leaving Texas, where would you go if you were going to go somewhere else? Man, if I left Texas, I'd probably go somewhere like fucking to the north, bro. Only only based on on the pay, you know, the the better, the fucking better pay up there. I was searching around, you know, because, you know, I, I'm, I'm the type of dude I like to look at. I'd like to see ahead, you know have some foresight for whenever the shit goes down, I don't have to do no planning, I can just bounce. So, uh, you know, I, I caught around and, and shit, listen, really what I was, what I, what, I, what I was doing when I was calling around, when I was listening to people's voices. Trying to see if I find a voice, you know, see what I hear in their voice, like, do they sound like they're fucking happy in Iowa? Do they sound like they're happy in, you know what I'm saying? Do they sound like, do they sound like, you know, they fucking depressed over there in fucking Washington and Seattle. You know what I'm saying? Like so. I'll, so the best, the fucking best places I heard, the best voices I heard was in Iowa. The motherfucker sounded fucking happy, like happy than a motherfucker in Iowa. So I probably take off to Iowa. I don't, but I see I haven't done any, I haven't done any uh any research on you know what what states because you don't you know if if Texas is gonna turn into a Blue state, you don't know some blue states could turn red. Hmm. So you know you gotta watch. I just gotta watch, pay attention how it flows, and you know, act accordingly. Okay. But yeah, that's it. That's it. You know that this political agendas versus the ethics. I, I really didn't understand the topic, but I just wanted to call in and speak on some of that shit the governor's doing. Okay. Well, that's interesting. I think I heard about the knife thing. I didn't know about the plumbing thing, but I had heard about the knife thing. Um, yeah, he also, uh, he also, uh, well, I think it was just this last couple of days, I don't know if it was today, or, I forgot when I read the article, but he, like, signed something about the, the people who have the, uh, like, you driving with no tags, they're driving with unregistered, you know how you gotta pay, like, $600, $300, $600 a year for three years, or $2,000 a year if you don't have no insurance, or something like that, he, he wiped all that shit clean, they're like, 600000 630,000 people. Can uh can get their license now? Can get their license back because mm. it's keeping them from getting from getting a license and being able to go to get a get a job and go to work. But see, you got you got to backtrack a little bit because he's just buying political favor. You know, look at what he did before that, before he got all that political favor. These couple weeks past, you know, before that, like signing these fucking knives and shit into you know building to effect and the plumbing and shit. Like, I, you know, it's. I just feel like it's we losing ground, hmm. you know. Yeah. I, you know, and then he's signing, he's signing these bills. People, people are gonna notice that. Like, oh shit, I go get my license. Oh shit, you know, he's 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 he's, he's good with me. Mm -hmm. He's good with me. You know what I'm saying? But then when you when you when you fucking hire a plumber, you drive home and you're, and you're with your with your brand new license that you got. You drive. <laughs> You drive home, uh, your wife done hired a fucking plumber who's taking $800 but ain't done shit. He pulls out a knife to stab you. <laughs> you, gonna, you ain't gonna be feeling the same way about Greg Abbott. You ain't gonna be, you ain't gonna be feeling the same way about Greg Abbott after that, man. Damn. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and he gonna get off on it legally because you came at him uh, probably trying to drive your new car at him or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but I mean, shit, ain't, ain't it better to be able to have that job deal with at least for that uh, uh, a better plumber man instead of having to, you know, not be able to drive and everything that's uh, going on with that? I mean, because it, it, shouldn't it be that the politicians do enact policies that benefit you in some way? Shouldn't that, that be the, the primary deal as opposed to, you know, keeping you stuck, keeping you stagnant? I don't know, man. I know, I know. These politicians, they look at shit way differently than what they put it out there. How they look at it, you know what I'm saying? It's a lot of, it's a lot of, it's a lot of uh, undercover agenda. A lot of, a lot of undercover agendas that, you know, a lot of paper being thrown around at certain people, you know, to put certain shit into effect. I know that's, I know that's a story. So all this, uh, you know, everything he says, you know, yeah, I take it to effect. I, you know, I, I take it, I take it, and I put it in my knowledge bank. But at the same time, you know, 
I, I know something else is up, is up. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that's why I just, you know, my 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 baby mama says, you know, you're just paranoid and shit. I say, hell no, nah, I ain't fucking paranoid. Oh yeah, you hear about the fucking uh the big ass arrest Donald Trump's gonna do next week? Nah. Yeah, it was. Down? I was breaking. It was breaking news. He's gonna have like a mass migrant arrest going down next week. Mm. Yeah, so shit's about to get extra hectic, you know. But that shit free. Hey, but I'm a little cold hearted when it comes to these topics. But you know, shit, that should free up some jobs for me, shit. Mm-hmm. So I ain't really, I ain't really complaining about that. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Okay. Uh, me, me and me and my people good on that. So I'm good on this shit. I need, I need. I'm trying to find a job right now. Yeah. Y'all know any place hiring in Houston, y'all get at me when I'm in the chat. Nah, right, that's a BET, man. Absolutely. Man, for us, anything else you want to add, man? That's it, man. All right, appreciate your call, man. All right. All right. And I'll be giving Shannon no damn pistachios. She don't need no damn pistachios. Uh, <laughs> nah, look, uh, uh, look, that Taco Bell is occupied. Don't, you don't want to go over there. I need, I need to go over there myself. I need to see who there now. It's been so long since I've been over there. Uh, let me see who's working now. A lot of high turnover. What's the motherfucking deal? Who do we have calling into the den this evening? It's me. Who, who is me? <laughs> Look, you on the line, don't we? Don't, no, no, no. Hello? Yeah, hello, hello. Who we got on the line in this, this evening? Man. I don't need no introduction. Yeah, you need it. Don't nobody know you. They know me. Nah, don't nobody know you. What y'all talking about? We, we talking about you and you evading the arrest by mashing off on the police. So did you successfully escape, or or uh, you caught him from the county? <laughs> no, I'm free. Oh, okay. I'm free. Okay, okay. So, so what are your thoughts on political agendas? You know, what what, <clears throat> what do you lean? Do you lean Democrat, Republican, neither, either? How do you feel? I feel uh, nobody should vote. That's what I feel. Fuck the government. Fuck all this shit. So why shouldn't anybody vote? So if nobody votes, you're just going to leave the the power of the decision in the hands of the few who are going to exercise their right to vote? Well, y'all shouldn't vote until somebody like me up and running. Now you're going to be in jail. You ain't going to never run. Yeah. You run. You running from the police. That's the only thing you running from. <laughs> anyway. So. Yeah. Why don't you vote? I don't know too why, much why? about politics. All I know is I don't fucking vote. That's all I know. Why, why don't you vote? Because I don't know. I don't, I don't know none of them. Uh, well, you got you to gotta get to know them. That's, that's the uh, the purpose. Y'all swear y'all know y'all, these political people. Yeah, I don't know Donald Trump. Y'all don't know none of these people. Oh, what you mean? Trump, my nigga, you see, he sent me this photo back here behind me. That's my, that's my partner. You know what I'm saying? That's exclusive. Got the signature and everything on it. He said I can see. He got his grill in Texas. Yeah, you know he went to TV Johnny. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah, yeah. That shit, that shit. Uh, yeah, that's about that's about twenty racks in his mouth right there. You know that's chump change for uh, for Trump. Yeah, it's tight plus to give him some diamonds. Why the gold shit? That's the real shit. Gold hold more value. Them diamonds be fugazi. Yeah, real pimps get gold, right? Yeah, that's that's that pimp shit. You should know. Mm-hmm. So what were you doing that, that okay. caused the laws to get behind you? I was trying to call your retired self. Damn, why I gotta be all that? You you the one you the one uh <laughs> evading the people. So you don't I wasn't see- evading, I was just trying I was trying to put the phone down, huh? So you don't, so you don't see how politics impact your life on a daily basis? Nah, I don't see nothing. All I know is my, uh, I didn't get as much tax money back. 
when Donald Trump, um, that's all I know. Okay. Well, then that's, that's the reason you should they vote. Cut, they cut my check a little short. So, so I mean, that's the reason you should vote right there. So, you you know, you, you care huh? about, that's the reason you should vote right there. If you care about your, your tech, you know, your, your tax returns or whatever it may be, you know what I'm saying? That, that's the reason to vote right there. Oh, yeah, and these motherfuckers audited me. You know what I think about it? Mm. You sound like somebody. But, you sound like somebody need to be audited. <laughs> shit, I got it figured out though. I ain't worried about that shit. They trying to say I owe seven thousand, eight thousand dollars. I'm like, oh yeah, shit! Right. See, you right. I ain't finna get that. You steal the money from the government. That's that's what that is. I'm finna call. I'm finna, finna get that shit from Honcho. Not me. I'm finna, I'm finna call Trump right now. I got your number. I'm finna give you your direct line. And tell him go ahead. How this I'm gonna get that shit. From, I'm gonna get that shit from Mar um, the Marcus or prepay one. Of them. I'm like, <laughs> gonna give me that so why ain't this motherfucker gonna give me that? Yeah, the Marky might do it. He been hanging out with Kenneth, so he might. The Marky might break bread. He might, you know, he might be with that shit. <laughs> Y'all greedy. Y'all only want to give motherfuckers pistachios and shit. Yeah, you look. That's what you do, man. Cash. Look, hey, pistachios are expensive. Uh, a decent sized bag of pistachios run you about eight nine dollars. So let's see, you you get you a couple of thousand of them shit. You have your money right. You take all these pistachios <laughs> you hustling. You put you bag them up, slang them on the uh, side of the road for about you know eight nine dollars a bag, and you are gonna be Gucci. That's how you feel. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm trying to help you out. You a hustler. I'm trying to you know just give you another little uh, little bit of hustler advice. Why y'all trying to act like y'all know anything about politics anyway? Y'all don't know shit. No, so what I don't you, know. What you, talk, talk yeah. political. But what I do you, don't know nothing. What, what, what do you know? What do you know about <laughs> politics? You you see you mad because they didn't they didn't got you for a couple of racks, but then you're not you're not exercising your right. You're not exercising your right to vote or, you know, utilize your your right as an American citizen. That was good. I probably can't even vote anyway. Oh, yeah, because I only got a mission here. That's tough. I'm allowed to vote. Well, they're going to use that shit. You got to go vote so your check check will be right next year or in 2020 or whatever. Yeah. I ain't worried about it. I know how to. I just got to give them the little paperwork they need to make it shut up. That's tough. That's tough. So have you filled out the paper? I don't know if I should be telling Agent Hunter that shit. Yeah, you know. I keep forgetting you're a fucking agent. Yeah, I'm CIA agent. See, I'm just taking, I'm writing all this shit down. <laughs> I'm finna send it to the right department. <laughs> you're writing all this shit down yeah, on your little notepad. Yeah, Got I'm me finna, fucked up. I'm finna send this shit to the right department. They're gonna be on your ass tomorrow morning. <laughs> so you slip, slip is caught. You know the rules. You didn't huh? get, I say slip is caught. You know the rules. You didn't told me too much. I'm having my, they gonna be at your front door. Fuckers out here stealing trash and shit. Damn. Okay. How you do it out here? Mm, that's tough. That's tough. So why why are you not concerned with politics? Why why don't you take the time to get to you know be familiar with what some of these candidates are <clears throat> alleging that they'll do for you? Man, I don't know. I do not know. Mm, that's tough. I do not know. So you really go out there and vote every fucking year, every eight years, every four years? Every four, you got uh, midterms. You, <laughs> you really go out there and vote. Yeah, you got midterms. You got all kind of stuff that you can vote for. Why? Why don't you vote? Why is it not? They don't even count your black ass vote. Man, what you mean? My they they count like, your... My vote is worth three times as much because I'm a super American. And they just rip your vote up, and they they put whoever they want in there. I don't know. I don't know about that. That's tough. That's tough. See you. You just waste your you time. Just, you don't. You don't have. Trust you think because you went to college, they care about what you, what you got to say? Mm -mm. Wrong. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Did I go to college? I don't know. I went straight to the academy. You know what I'm saying? I ain't even go to college. You went where? I said I went straight to the academy. I ain't even go to college. What academy? You said I was an agent. Oh, the, CIA, no, I said, nah, I the said, Asian Academy? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I believe it. Mm -hmm. I believe that shit. Don't try to play it off. Yeah, that's what I'm saying.
That's true. I'm just, I'm see, that's why, that's why I be taking these immaculate notes. So that way, I'm just, I'm just tracking everybody. I've just put it all in my, in my file on everybody since I'm an agent. <laughs> Your feelings got hurt. Somebody caught you an agent. You really took that shit to the heart. Man, I don't give a shit yeah, about. Funny. I don't give a shit about them or that statement. I can care less how they feel. I seen a little this. tear. I seen a little tear come down. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. I've been exposed. That's tough. Okay, I got a question for you. Since you don't care about politics, you know, since politics mm -hmm. are not your thing, mm -mm. how do you feel about the situation that went down in Memphis? The Memphis situation? Mm -hmm. How do I feel? Mm -hmm. uh, how do I feel? I don't really know exactly everything that happened. All I know is they shot him and what exactly happened, and I can tell you how I feel. Okay, well, what it was, old buddy, you know, he was out in Memphis, he was banging, and he took a trip down to Mississippi. He made a fake Facebook page to go uh, make an exchange for a vehicle. Instead of buying a vehicle, he shot old buddy five times, stole the vehicle, you know, slid back to Memphis, and, <clears throat> you know, they, they, the U.S. Marshals end up coming up to Memphis looking for him, and they ran up on him when he came out of his house. He was in the stolen vehicle, tried to ram the uh the marshals or whatever couldn't couldn't do that successfully so he hopped out the car grabbed the gun was about i'm assuming was about to start shooting and uh he ended up getting mowed down so do you think they were right for that or he was wrong for it or who was what was what how do you feel about it yeah well how i feel about that is uh who the fuck are these u.s marshals i think they have a right to go sit here and, and do shit and, and run up on pe yeah, people at their house. That's how I feel about that. I said, fuck the U.S. Marshal. But that's their job. What you mean? <laughs> that's a stupid job. They should quit. Why should they quit? So they so, so laws should just, should just not be enforced? People should just be able to just do dirt wherever they want to? Nah, but who are, who is the U.S. Marshal? Like, they are a law enforcement Some racist agent. white guys that some KKK members? Who are they? they I don't give a fuck about a U.S. Marshal. They need to quit. But why do they, they need all to need quit? to kill themselves. Why, but why they gotta kill themselves? They, they supposed to? They supposed to enforce federal law. So if somebody does dirt when they cross some state lines, you know, it becomes a federal offense. So you know, they gotta handle that. A federal offense, state law. Get the fuck out of here! What the hell does that mean? That mean them motherfuckers doing dirt across the border. You don't even know about borders. You don't even know where, who the hell, what the hell, mm, mm, mm. what the fuck. Mm, mm, mm. I'm worried fuck about all you. that shit. I'm worried about you. So you just want to live in a reckless society. <laughs> you, just, you just want to live reckless. They have authority over who. The who the fuck are they? The, the, the U.S. Marshal. I'm just worried about the U.S. Government. Marshal. They don't got no right to be enforcing any kind of fucking weird ass law, made up law. How's it made up? Who made it up? Who got who got shot? Why he didn't why he didn't shoot back? He was trying oh, to shoot yeah. back. He, he was trying to shoot back, and they caught it. They caught him first. That's what I'm saying. He was slipping. That's his fucking fault. Mm. Mm. But you feel me? That's between him and Duke. That's them. They, they should have went to worry about it. Not U.S. Marshal. Who the fuck are they? So, do you think you that know, they, I'm anti-police? I don't give a fuck about it. no police. Never, never will, never will change my mind. Nothing will ever change my mind. Mm, mm, that's tough. If the fucking uh, what you call it? If if Memphis is mad, like I said, they got mad. <laughs> so you mad just because they mad? Yeah. <laughs> nah, stop. So all I'm saying is this. I'm wrong. Uh, you're not right. <laughs> Let me find out I'm wrong. How the fuck I'm wrong? You wrong. So okay. So this man. So say this man is an upstanding citizen. He's just a civilian trying to sell his car, make a little bit more money. He might be trying to take care of his family or do whatever he's trying to do to you know get ahead. Or maybe he don't have need for the car anymore. He want to put a little few more dollars in his, his little nest egg or whatever. And so this dude just feels like it's his right to come in. So y'all too worried up. about y'all just making shit up about his nest egg. All how, kinds how, of how we make stuff up? It, but it's, it's his right. If it's his vehicle, it's his property. It's his right, right? This is, he has ownership of of this vehicle. Okay, so, but so, who are the police? So, but what I'm saying, who is the U.S. Marshal? So, so who is like, the are you doing a background shot? check on them? 
why are we doing a background check on them? Obviously, they've had a background check. And so that's why they got the job. They're not going to let a me do it. A background check by who, though? By the government. They're not going to let me do it. They're not going to let you do it. I can't be no U.S. Marshal, even though I'm an agent somehow. They're not going to let you be a U.S. Marshal, even though you're slanging pistachios. So exactly. I'll, I'll, why I'll, the fuck they wouldn't let me be a U.S. Marshal? Man, because you don't pay your taxes. What you mean? You I pay that shit. Man, they ain't trying to rob me. Man, you don't pay your taxes, so you can't be a U.S. Marshal. But all I'm saying I don't is, pay so, tax. Every time I go buy something, they talk about $0.08, cent, $0.07, cent, $0.15, cent, $0.24. Cent. That's, that's, every time I, I pay all kind of bullshit taxes. What are you talking about? Mm, they tax paying, for everything. You ain't paying pistachio tax. Oh, you over there paying them soda taxes and shit. But see, here, here's my deal. Here's my deal. Uh, if you out there banging, you doing whatever you do, do what you do. You know what I'm saying? But I say, if a motherfucker is a civilian, they not in that life, you leave the motherfuckers alone. If you chose that life, do what you do. Bang on the bangers, you know what I'm saying? Do that. That's what you do. That's how I feel like it. That's, that's, that's my methodology behind it. If you want to be about that life, that's fine. That's daddy. At the same time, you got to realize what consequences come with that, and that's law enforcement. I mean, that's what's, that's, that's what's going to end up pulling up on your ass sooner or later. You know what I'm saying? And so yeah. you know that. If you live in that life, you know that's what's going to happen. It's either death or jail. So my thing is, regardless if it's U.S. Marshals, whether it's FBI, the CIA, whoever the fuck it may be, you know what I'm saying? Like, Okay, though, but he came out with a gun, so what? Shoot his motherfucking ass. So if a motherfucker was drunk, okay, say you went to go handle that. Say, say Are you for sure he had a gun? Like, I don't know. I don't know that he had a gun for sure. Is you don't even know the story. How do you know? You don't even know what happened. So you don't know if he did or didn't. You don't even know You the seen story. a video? Yeah, I seen, I seen the video. I got the exclusive video right here on my desktop. Why you ain't sharing it then? So I mm -hmm. can see the truth. Because mm -hmm. you ain't going to believe it even if you did see it. See, you lying. <laughs> You don't even got the truth, but you're over here making up all these rules. Uh, well, the I'm truth. not making up no rules. I'm, I'm telling you the story. I'm telling you what happened. If I got a vehicle and I'm selling it for whatever reason, I want the money for selling that vehicle. It doesn't even fucking matter. It's my vehicle. So if we exchange some shit, it should be my money. You got the vehicle. You got what you wanted in a in a decent exchange. But instead, old buddy felt like he ain't want to. He ain't want to spend all that bread. That That's what you don't understand. So, who are these police? Who is the dude? Who who is it? Who, that who, has, why do y'all feel like? Why do y'all feel like the police have authority over you? Man, look. Why who brainwashed you? Here's my deal. Okay, here's my deal. Nobody said they do. If you want to fight the police, go for it. Go to war. Go ahead. Go all out. Uh, if that's how you feel, I encourage you to do so. But be prepared for whatever outcomes come with that. I wouldn't do no dumb shit like that. That's okay. stupid. He's stupid. Okay. But at the so, same time, so what you think is gonna happen if the police get involved in a situation? But at the same time, my point is, who is the police? Like, who the fuck are they to oh, tell I'm, this man and to come shoot this man? Who is? Who are they? They are the enforcement of the law. That's who they are. That's what I'm saying. Everybody in America brainwashed. That's why these police get away with all this shit. Everybody, oh, the police got authority over you. The police don't have authority over nobody. Okay, so who has Do the they feed y'all? Who has the authority then? When they feed me, when they pay my bills, okay, you got authority who, over me. Man. Okay, so who, who who has the authority then in America? Man, it's supposed to be the people, but y'all over here want to be slaves. Still, everybody want to be a slave. So slaves should be out there stealing and that's justified? So slaves should steal from other slaves? Huh? So slaves should steal from other slaves? Slaves should do what? So slaves should steal from other slaves? No, that's what I'm saying. Like, we, you already know the police is correct. Like, unless it was, it's a, um, unless it's a real, uh, foolproof system, like, I understand. You already know. Okay, how do you, how do you make the system you foolproof? Know. How do you, how do you, how do you, uh, make the system I foolproof? I already, I'm mean, asking people that's already in charge. So who are you gonna put in charge yeah, and fire everybody? Who who's who, who, who the new people gonna be? Who what? Who are the new people gonna be? If you fire everybody that's in charge right now, who are you gonna replace them with? They well, still... I'm gonna tell you who who could police out here in my neighborhood. I mean, oh. it's easy. I don't need no police. I never needed to call the police for shit. Okay, so who who police in your neighborhood? Uh, my friend is the police themselves. And for those that you feel me can't police themselves, you feel me? They probably got an uncle. Somebody the police. They ask. Don't so, so who gave them the authority? Who gave what? Who gave them the authority to police themselves? Damn, if you were the victim, you got your own authority to police yourself. 
if you victimize, you have authority to say whatever you want to, you feel me, whatever the fuck, you know? That don't make sense? No. Because you're still giving a certain... No, I'm wrong. You're, you're giving okay. certain... You're still giving certain... Let me certain, find out I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, give me 10,000 pistachios. That don't work like that. That's the most ass backwards shit I've ever heard in my life. Did you be deliberately wrong? Okay. All I'm saying is this. So basically, you're giving someone authority to police. Even if you're saying there's people in the neighborhood police, you're still giving somebody authority, right? Yeah, but... I don't know what happened. You faded. You faded out on me. I don't know. I don't know what you're saying. You you faded out on me. That's out. I don't know what you're saying. It sounded like you was talking under the cover, under the blankets and shit. I don't know what you got going on. Don't sound like you like you going you going in and out. I like I I, I cannot hear what you're saying. Uh, probably because the, the reception be fucked up on there. Mm, mm. You better call the police and tell them to fix you the reception. Me? Yeah, I can hear you. That's what I'm saying. Tell the police to come fix the reception. Well, you tell them your reception <laughs> fucked up. I'm good. I'm Gucci over here. You know, Verizon police my phone. They they keep me right. Verizon. Yeah, Verizon police my phone. They keep me right, man. I can talk in the. I was talking in cornfields in the middle of South Dakota. My shit was clear. Can you hear me now? Yep, I was good. Oh, you're spoiled. How am I spoiled? What? what? Mm. I don't, I don't know. I don't We're know. not spoiled in California like that. No. Y'all y'all fucking up because y'all ain't going vote. Y'all letting these motherfuckers do whatever they want to do to y'all. That's why the shit fucked up. And they ain't regulating the fucking uh, the cell phone towers and shit. That's why y'all y'all signal all fucked up. See, that's the problem, especially out in California. They're trying to kick us out. They're trying to kick us out. They're trying to kick us out. They're trying to make us move to Texas. Nah, y'all ain't welcome over here. Y'all stay where y'all at. Because y'all, y'all don't want to follow the laws. In Texas, we got rules and regulations, and y'all ain't trying to follow the rules, and we ain't going to have none of that shit. Because in Texas, yeah, we, we you definitely... You know you want us out, out there in Texas. Man, Cut it out. Man, look, it's already enough for y'all out here. We didn't, we didn't reach the limit. Made y'all life way happier. Absolutely not. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, uh <laughs> Why are you lying? Mm, thank God for California, right? You just said he was terrible. They were trying to kick you out. I thank God for California. I, don't, I think you were indecisive. I'm saying that's what you feel. Thank no, God for Cali. Oh, no, absolutely not. Like if it wasn't for Cali, you feel me? If it wasn't for Cali, you'd probably be one unhappy guy. And I'd be. I'd be a very happy gentleman, one way or another. Whether California yeah, was, was was existing or not, because y'all don't want to vote. I wouldn't be happy with all this California sunshine over there. How are we, how we get how we get in California sunshine? They the sunshine when in Cal- we go out there. California sunshine in California. We get Texas humidity. We don't get no California sunshine. That's why it's humid because y'all are so sour, and we bring the sunshine, so it makes humidity. Humidity. I'm gonna say. Uh, I'm gonna say science wasn't your your. Your first choice, because that don't that don't even sound right. Uh, what part of Cali are you in? What part of Cali? Mm-hmm. You already know. Quit playing with me. I don't know. The people want to know what part of Cali are you in. <laughs> you know what part of Cali I'm in? I don't know. I have no idea. The people want to know what part of Cali you in. I'm in Sac. Sac Town. Okay. Interesting. Huh? So you you in Sacktown? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sound like you over there in San Francisco. Why? What they saying in the chat? They talking shit? What they say? Mm, I can't go, see them. You gotta go read it after you, when you get off the call. You gotta. Go <laughs> they talking hell and shit, dumb ass shit. I slap all y'all motherfuckers. Mm, they gonna call the cops on your ass. <laughs> <laughs> I know y'all will. Yeah, they gonna call the they gonna call the motherfucking laws on you. They gonna say, "Yep, yeah, we got a reckless pimp over here." And uh, we need her under control. So that's what y'all do. Yeah, that's what they gonna do. That's what y'all do in Texas. Y'all call the law. Yeah, we gonna call the law. We uh, like some like some good old boys. Yeah, we gonna call the law. They gonna pull up on horses. <laughs> they gonna put up on some horses. And, y'all and, some and good throw, old boys down, down there in the Texas. Horse. So you know, that's what's up. Y'all y'all cops pull up on rollerblades and shit. Our cops pull up on horses. Well, I 
ain't no rollerblading cops over here. You got us fucked up. Cops out here are some real gangsters out here. Oh, so what? So if they gangsters, then shit, why they why they can't police then? That's what I'm saying. That's why you got to go to work there. They ain't a whole different gang. They mm -hmm. don't play. They don't. They're not the police for you. They're not the police for us. They don't fuck with us. Mm -hmm. If I caught the police right now, they gonna find a reason to arrest me. Yeah, cause you ain't paying your motherfucking taxes. <laughs> no. You ain't you ain't paying their salary. If you ain't paying their tax, they don't give a shit about you. Look, like, oh, you ain't paying no taxes. You ain't paying. You ain't you ain't, you ain't helping me feed my family. Your ass going to jail. They gonna be like, I don't like your attitude. I don't like your attitude. Cause you cause you getting froggy with huh? them. You ain't you ain't allowing them to do their job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't see the need for him. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Most tough. people is, you feel me? Most people just follow the law, so it really ain't no need for the police. I have. People, don't nobody want to sit here and be beefing all day long? Mm -hmm. why, why you beefing though? Huh? Why y'all beefing though? I don't know why people beef. I should say people follow the law for the most part around here, so we don't really need the police. Sound, it sounds good. <laughs> mm. Okay. All right. Well, <clears throat> Miss Pimp, is there anything else you would like to add? So you don't like politics and you rooting for Memphis and, and all that. Is there anything else you would like to add to the uh, conversation? Mm -hmm. Why somebody calling? Hmm? No, I'm going to get ready to wind it down here. Somebody calling in? I'm going to get ready to wind it down You're here. Winding man. it down? Yes, because it's over two hours. Y'all be trying to, you know, say so y'all be trying to... Uh, Steal my time, you know. I'm gonna start charging about an hour, right. like uh, like them Sacktown high class escorts do. Like a Sacktown what? Like those Sacktown high class escorts do. Start charging about an hour. <laughs> the fuck? You a pimp? You supposed to know how they go? I don't know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I think you're slacking on your pimping. Mm -hmm. All right, well, Miss Pimp, Miss Law Abiding, Tax Paying, Police Loving Pimp, is there anything mm -hmm. else that you got? I don't got nothing to say. Mm. But y'all should probably uh, uh, vote for me. I mean, you don't even believe in the system, so somebody going to vote for you. <laughs> I believe in me. Vote for me. Everybody will be cool. Mm, everybody on. follow all my rules, and you guys will be all right. I thought, but then now we're gonna be slaves. We're gonna be your slaves if that was the case. I don't think that's. I don't think that's shaking. Uh, I might have to disagree with that. I'd rather vote for Pedro before I vote for you. You vote for who? I'd rather vote for Pedro before I vote for you. Pedro, yeah. you probably vote for Trump before you vote for me too. Uh, I'd, I'd absolutely would. Fake. Uh, I, I absolutely would vote for Trump before I vote for you. <laughs> How? <laughs> because of these, you, you, you don't even know Trump. Because he's talking about you. Don't so I, don't know, Trump. I don't know you. You look. What you, you mean Trump ain't on your in, in your den? You feel man. me helping helping you blow up? Man, you don't Sa Sa Trump? Sa you don't Savage, Sa man, Savage Donald Trump in the den right now. What you talking about Trump in the den as we speak? Oh, oh all this fucking conery. Oh my goodness. Mm, 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 mm. I don't. I don't even know, player. I don't even know, player. I don't know what's going down. But here's the deal, Miss Pimp. Uh, All right, I'm going to let you go down and so I, I can um, hop in the chat and talk shit. Yeah, because you're going to have an empty pistachio account when I'm done. But I appreciate you calling it in. I don't, I, I, don't, I don't know what we were talking what? about. I don't even know where we went. But uh, I appreciate the call, nonetheless. Adios. Adios, amigo. <laughs> Oh man! Well, shout out to the pimp for being able to uh, evade arrest and all that good stuff. But uh, we finna get ready to wind it down. Uh, Wise, what's the motherfucking deal, man? Yeah, I don't, I don't know what happened on that last call. She just the rule breaks. That's how y'all women folk be acting. I don't want to follow the rules. You know what I'm saying? Um. Yeah, there's that. So. Uh. I'm probably not going to mix it tonight. I'm going to uh, get ready to rest up so I can you know, get some things done in the morning and get ready for the 10 o'clock den. Again, 
make sure. And then at 10, y'all know how it goes. Uh, let me put all the proper shit out there. You want to follow my own personal socials, Ed Honcho HTX on Instagram and Twitter. You know, all that good shit. Um, <clears throat> hey, hit that like button. Subscribe. If you're new to this, we do this live every night, 10 p.m. Central. Uh, and we do this Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Didn't show live. If you want to follow the channel, um, socials at didn't show live at Gmail. You know, that shit been fucking up the whole night. Didn't show live at gmail.com. If you want to email, if you got something you'd like to share, news story, whatever else it may be, feel free. Again, weekday mornings, 10 a.m. Central Time. And uh, every evening, seven days a week, 10 p.m. Central Time. And I appreciate y'all for all, you know, coming through all that good stuff. If you can't always watch, make sure you listen. Dinshowpodcast.com. Make sure you follow that. I'm going to start dropping some audio on this. And I was supposed to do something today, but got a little bit caught up, so I didn't drop an audio podcast. But, you know, we'll, we'll get there. If you want to get some of that fly merch, get you a uh, slide to the Den Show shop. Dot com. Get you some of that fly merch and get one of them uh, Trump grills. That hoe is throw. Get you one. If you would like to support the channel, you can always make a one-time donation via Streamlabs. We the super chats are cut off right now, but you can make a donation at Streamlabs. Streamlabs.com slash The Den Show. And then uh, if you want to make a monthly pledge, I'm hitting all the wrong shit. If you want to make a monthly pledge, you can go to Patreon.com. Slash the Den Show. Shout out to James. Shout out to Stina Starry Eyed. Shout out to <clears throat> Diana, Dan, Goya, and Miss Betty Spaghetti. I appreciate all of y'all. I appreciate y'all supporting the Den on a long term basis, you know, and showing the faith that you have in this community. Um, and if you ever want to call the Den, whether we live or not, whatever it may be, whether you know you might catch a voicemail, but feel free. You can always hit the Den line 833-284-3336. The number two, the Den is the easiest way to remember that. Send a text message. If you come across something you want to screenshot, send a picture, memes, whatever you got. If it's something funny you want to share, hey, feel free. You feel me. And uh, let me see if you the photo. I ain't, I ain't check it out. Let me see what's happening. Um, <clears throat> the den line is always open to contact. And if it's, you know, if I ain't got too much going on and I have it open, I'll, I'll take your calls. I'll chop it up with you from time to time. But um, with that being said, it's about that time. I want to thank all of y'all for coming through. I want to thank all of y'all for... Man, what's going on here? Uh, checking out the channel. If you're new to this, not true to this, again, hit that sub button. We do this live every night. Um, it is a pleasure, a privilege, and an honor. Yeah, you can send news. I'll, I'll look at them and I'll talk about you. I'll be like, what's, what's that birthmark right there? I like that shit. <laughs> Um, but all jokes aside, man, I appreciate y'all. I thank y'all. I'm going to steal. I'm about to pimp. I'm about to do all this shit in the chat for a little bit. I'm going to take all your pistachios, whether you like it or not. Um, but y'all be cool like y'all be cool, man. I appreciate each and every one of y'all. And, um, thank y'all for being members of the den. I didn't see it. it my, my shit is tripping for some reason. They ain't let me go to the, uh, to the dilly dally. Let me see. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Yeah, no, it ain't, it ain't, uh, it ain't come up. I didn't get the picture. I didn't get the picture. Resend it again and I'll put it up for, um, I'll put it up for, uh, for tomorrow's stream because I didn't get it for some reason. It didn't go. Oh, okay. Okay, I've seen that on the IG, but I hadn't, um, uh, I didn't, I didn't know what that was. <laughs> I didn't know what that was. Um, I saw I saw the uh, the that it was very interesting. Um, but with that being said, man, uh, what time is it? So I don't know. I might I might let me let me decide within the next minute. I'll let y'all know. Chat. I might I might do a little ho ass short mixer tonight. I'm just because I'm not really tired. Um, <clears throat> we'll see we'll see. But I'm gonna steal some shit from y'all in the chat. But with that being said, catch y'all on the flip side. I appreciate y'all. Whether we agreed or disagreed tonight, I still got love for all you Den folk. Y'all, y'all are y'all are great people. I appreciate y'all for coming through and uh, catch y'all manana if it's in a den. Maybe later tonight. Maybe in a few minutes if we're on the mixer. Let me let me decide if I if I get a couple of wins in the in the bot, I'll get on the mixer. Let's see. Let's see who we got. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. Let me see who can I steal from. Let me see if I get a steal. Do I get a win? Hmm. 
couldn't steal. Oh, I did. I got one. Let me see. I got a win on Ferocious. Let me see if I can. Let me let me, let me uh see if I can get this sock game on. Ah, shit, shit. I don't know. Fuck it. Let me see. Let me see what time it is. I'll catch y'all on the mixer in like five minutes. If y'all want to fuck with it, I'll be in the mixer in like five minutes. I'm out.